Hi, Ashley here, a superstar in the making. At least I was until the accident happened and I was left with a scar. With a huge audition coming up, my manager boyfriend Callum persuaded me to get my twin sister, Bridget, to pose on stage as me. She took on the glitzy parts of my life while I stayed in the background and recorded at the studio with David, my grumpy but talented music producer. It was only supposed to be until my scar healed, but then the doctor told me the devastating news. The scar was here to stay. Upset, I went around to Callum's for support and saw him there with Bridget. They were leaning in to kiss. I couldn't believe my sister and my boyfriend would do this to me. So with rage swirling through me, I karate kicked open the door and barged inside to confront the conniving snakes. How could you? My boyfriend and my own sister! He's your boyfriend? I, I didn't know. I'm so sorry. No, you did nothing wrong. I fell for her first, Ashley. Can you blame me? She's a flawless superstar. You'd understand because you used to be her. At least until you crumbled. I was freaking hit by a car, you douchebag. But it didn't matter to him at all. That's when it hit me. Callum never loved me. I was just a tool to him. You can't trust him, Bridget. It's only a matter of time before he decides you're no use to him anymore and ditches you. Just like what he's doing to me right now. And I'm going to make sure the whole world knows what a jerk he is. Callum suddenly lunged towards me, then aggressively dragged me out of the house. You think you can threaten me with a big mouth? Who's going to believe you, huh? You're just a shadow of Bridget, a flawed, pathetic version of her. So get lost. You, you'll never get away with this. Just you wait and see. Days later, I was still hung up on his cruel words, but I had to do something to take back what's mine. So I spent ages covering my scar with makeup, then showed up at an event I was supposed to attend. I confidently strutted up to the entrance. Whoa, whoa. Nice try, Ashley. But the scar gives you away. Try Kylo Ren next time. Pfft. <laughs> that stung. Feeling hopeless, I started walking, and my feet unconsciously led me to the studio. I turned on the lights and played my previous records. Surprisingly, my singing had improved one by one. So I turned up the song volume and sang and danced along. I was busting some crazy dance moves when I suddenly heard clapping. I didn't know you've got the groove. Come to think of it, I've never seen you this happy before. You have no idea what I've been through. I felt safe around him, so before I could stop myself, I blurted out what had happened. He insisted on taking me somewhere fun to cheer me up. Turns out David's fun place is the super cool Japanese fair. We shared some huge rainbow cotton candy and lit sparklers and drew musical notes in the air. Then, as we walked past a stall with some fantastically colorful masks, I stopped dead and stared at them. Hey, I have an idea. I should start a new singing career wearing a cool mask. I mean, it's not the most original idea since Sia and Marshmallow have already done it, but I can hide my face and Callum wouldn't even notice to stop me. That's actually a great idea. Hmm. Here, this one looks cute on you. Holy cow, red alert, red alert. You're falling for this charming, handsome, talented music producer guy. It's on me, by the way. Consider it a lucky charm, okay? For sure, I swooned and was motivated to create a YouTube channel right away, starring me singing with my mask on and used Vixie as my stage name. At first, I only covered other artists' songs, but as my confidence and following grew, I began singing the songs David helped me write. Although the netizens quickly spotted the similarities between my voice and Bridget's pre-recordings, they're both mine. But the difference is, one uses a ton of auto-tune and one does not. Then, one by one, I released more songs, and over the course of a few months, my channel grew to over 1 million subscribers. For the first time in my life, people actually saw me for my musical talents, not for the way I looked. So, to thank them, David and I spent weeks in the studio composing a special song called Thistle's Bloom to release on Valentine's Day. Then one day, David was invited to the Grand Gala, which was a massive event full of the hottest stars, and he took me along with him. The party went off to a great start, and everyone was so complimentary about my music. I was dancing alone while David talked business with some music producer. But then, Bridget suddenly appeared and tried talking to me. Vixie, hi! I love your look! I ignored her and went to leave, when suddenly I got this itchy feeling in my throat, and I felt my face begin to swell. I looked down and gasped when I saw pecans inside my muffin. Oh no! I'm allergic to pecan! I ran to the toilet and took off the mask to catch my breath when the bathroom door snapped open and in walked Bridget. Come on, Ash, I already knew it was you.
Sorry, guys. <laughs> the door seems to be stuck. She slammed the door shut and went trying to help me. I didn't want her help, but I didn't have much choice. I put my mask back on and let her place her jacket around my shoulders and sneak me out of there. She got her driver to pick us up around the back of the building and take me home. Then she made sure I took my allergy medicine. Don't expect me to thank you for this. No, I... Ugh. After you left Callum's house, he told me you gave up singing for me and that you gave us your blessing. But when I saw videos of Vixie going viral, I instantly knew it was you, and he'd lied to me. Yeah, he's good at doing that. I feel really bad for what happened, so I want to make it right. I'll give you back your place as a singer. You're serious? Absolutely. I was so relieved you hadn't given up on your passion. You have no idea how amazing you sound. Actually, I do, but I can't take all the credit. David helped me produce the song, and we're actually releasing it this Valentine. Really? I can't wait to hear it. Fine, you can hear the demo if you want. She loved the song, and I had to admit, it felt good having my twin back. A few days later, I was fully recovered from my allergy attack and feeling excited about my big song reveal. But then I went on my laptop and saw that Bridget had released a new song, Thistle Bloom, my song. I immediately called Bridget to find out what was going on. Surprised, weren't you? Now you know how I feel. I've always been inferior to you. It's about time you be the loser. Oh, and BTW, Callum and I are officially dating. He picked me over you. So did your fans. <laughs> they definitely won't be fooled. I'll show them the truth. I went online and insisted that the song was my work. But not only did the netizens not believe me, but they also wanted me canceled. This Ashley wannabe is so tragic. I always thought this masked girl was sketchy. She thought she was so sleek stealing Ashley's song. I had to watch my subscriber count take a nosedive. All my hard work had gone to waste. I turned my phone off and just sat in a dark room wishing I was beautiful again. Maybe people would believe me then. Suddenly, the door opened and in walked David. You've been ignoring my calls and messages, so I came to see if you were okay. Seems you're not. No, I'm hideous and now my career is over. Your career isn't over because of how you look. Can't you see? You're very talented and you're all set to become a great artist. That's why Bridget is so jealous and insecure. She has to steal your work. So people still believe Bridget because she's beautiful. No one wants to believe in this sketchy, masked girl who's too afraid to show her scarred face. Look, I can't hear most of the words you just said, but all I know is you can't let a minor setback like this stop you from doing what you love. He then took something out of his ears. Hang on, were they hearing aids? My hearing started deteriorating when I was 15. When I told everyone I wanted to work in the music industry, they all thought I was Delulu. But five years later, and look at me now. Of course, it was hard for me too, but I never let my disadvantage get in the way of my dream. You, you really did it! Sorry, what you say? Oh, that actually made a lot of sense. If David could overcome this and continue to compose and produce amazing music, then I could overcome my body image issues and become a real singer in my own right and under my name. I started by snooping around my old fan pages and found out that Bridget was going to hold a press conference for the release of her latest album and perform Thistle Bloom. I devised a plan to get there before she did, and that includes David puncturing his own car tire and getting Bridget and her team caught in traffic. On the press conference's stage, I was shaking like crazy, but as soon as I heard the audience chanting my name, I knew I could do this. I stepped on stage, and while the crowd was too stunned to react, I quickly started performing an acoustic version of Thistle Bloom, and the crowd went quiet. I could see it in their eyes. They were moved. Then the screen behind me lit up and played a video of me and David working on the song. When my performance ended, the audience erupted in applause. I was overwhelmed with joy, but then a reporter suddenly stood up and asked, Are you the masked singer, Vixie? What are you doing here instead of Ashley? I knew this was my moment of truth, so I took a deep breath, then removed my mask. I'm actually the real Ashley. The audience gasped in shock. Buzzling started spreading. I got the scar from a car accident. I was so hungry for fame, but believed I could never make it as a star with a scar. So I asked my twin sister, Bridget, to take my place. I'm sorry that we deceived you like that, and I promise that from now on, I will always stay true to myself, scar or no scar. Then I stepped down from the stage and walked past Bridget, who was trying to escape the reporters. She looked around and called Callum's name for help, but in typical Callum style, he was trying to blend into the crowd. Ashley, what's the twin swapping plan your idea? No, 
It was actually my ex-manager's, aka cheating ex-boyfriend's idea, wasn't it, Callum? I watched him look mortified as they swarmed around him. <laughs> it seems like he's gonna have a hard time with his career in the future. That's karma for you. Then I strolled out of there with David waiting at the door, leaving all the buzzing behind me. I started living my life just the way I wanted and no longer cared what Bridget and Callum were up to. Then one day, I was driving home from the studio when I saw Bridget surrounded by some thugs. I called the police and then made sure she was okay. Turns out, mom was in debt and the collectors were now forcing Bridget to pay up. My life's a failure. I try to be you to escape this pathetic reality, but got carried away and wanted to replace you. I don't have any excuse for my actions. Just punish me however you want. I stayed silent for a while, then eventually decided to drive her home. It made sense now. Bridget despised me because she'd spent years suffering with mom, while I had a privileged, happy life with dad. I felt bad for her, because after all, she's just a victim of mom's neglect. So, I used the money Bridget had made while being me to pay off mom's debt, and then I spoke to dad and arranged for her to move in with us. Things aren't perfect between us, but we're getting there. She's still super shy and moody, but she's doing a lot better than she was. I learned to accept the scar on my face and became a real singer. I may not be a household name, but I guess I'm pretty famous and also an inspiration to young girls who feel self-conscious about the way they look. And you know what? I'm happy with that. Best of all, I now have a cute, kind, loving, albeit grouchy at times, boyfriend, David. We even opened a music company that judged our clients on their talent, not their appearance. I was cuddled up next to David watching the news when the reporter said there was a groundbreaking new scar treatment available. Do you still want to remove your scar? No, as it's now a part of me. Hi. I'm Kate, and I'm doing something totally thrilling. I'm running away. Just picturing my parents' worried faces makes me smile. Why, you ask? They deserve it for trying to send me, their beloved only daughter, to some disgusting girl's boarding school. Yuck! No parties, the grossest uniform, bossy supervisors, and no hot-muscled guys. Ugh! That place is for nerds. Not me, an it girl and the founder of Clique Chic, our school's exclusive group for the hottest, most sought-after girls. To be a part of the club, you must be really fashionable, you know? I'm talking about a wardrobe full of the latest designer must-haves, manicured nails, and the glossiest hair. Only girls as dazzling as us can make the school hallway our catwalk stage. As one of us, your life will be filled with endless parties and super cute jocks fighting for your attention. Studying and homework? <laughs> That's not our thing. Those loser nerds who are chasing after us will take care of it. Hey, do you know those people? I looked outside and saw a group of bodyguards who were yelling and trying to force my cab to stop. Ugh, this was so uncalled for. 500 bucks if you can get rid of them. The driver immediately sped up. <laughs> Ordinary people will do anything for a little bit of money. He dropped me off at a service station and I quickly snuck inside and hid in the restrooms. Ew, this place was gross. Gosh, those bodyguards were loitering about outside so no one could leave or enter without them seeing. How tragic. This was so stupid. All my parents needed to do was let me stay at home for the summer. But no, they sent those bodyguards after me to ruin my life. Suddenly, a cubicle door flung open and knocked into me. Ouch! Are you blind? What are those glasses even for? I... I'm sorry. The girl quickly apologized, then she bent down to pick her fallen stuff up. But when she looked up, I gasped in shock. Holy guacamole! What in the world? She looked exactly like me. I mean, at least her face did. Her style was disgusting and old-fashioned. Ew. But given my dire situation, I came up with an amazing idea. Okay, so this is weird. Do you want to make some money? And I mean a lot of money? She gave me this dumbfounded look. Ew. I hope I didn't get frown lines like she did when I screwed up my face. They were ghastly. I have a really lucrative job for you. 
as you can see, we have similar faces. Freaky, but fortunate. So I need you to pretend to be me and live my rich life for a month or two. Here's my Twitter account. Just skim through it. You can learn everything about me there. It should be enough for you to play the part and avoid my family's suspicion. And here's your payment. I rifled through my bag and handed her the rest of the cash. Jeez, this must be a huge amount for her, as her eyes lit up like she was seeing money for the first time, and she immediately took it. We quickly exchanged clothes, and as instructed, she went outside to hand herself over to the bodyguards. Ah, freedom! Now bring on one long, hot summer of fun. But first, I have to go shopping. Wearing these old-fashioned, disgusting clothes made me want to puke. Oh no! My parents have locked all of my credit cards! I can't even buy a soya milk ice latte now! Oof! How could my parents be so cruel? The worst part is, I had stupidly given all my cash and my phone to that girl! With no other options left, I reluctantly searched the girl's bag. A few old-fashioned clothes, some stupid books, and an unbranded lipstick? Huh? Was that all? How can people live like this? But, hmm, what's this? In her small notebook was a train ticket and an offer letter to work at Homestay Allen. So, looks like she's going there for a summer job. Hopefully that homestay has a bath with scented candles and a pool for me to sunbathe by. I need to work on my tan. I was glad to get off that flea-ridden thing and breathe in some fresh air. Hmm, now where was my ride? There was a short, chubby old man holding a board with the name Clara on it. Ah, the name on the train ticket was Clara. So this meant he was here for me? Ugh, he didn't even have flowers with him, and he could have at least combed his hair. So, turns out, that's Danny the manager and owner of the homestay. Honestly, if it wasn't for the circumstances, I would never have set foot in this stupid place. Oh, how the day got worse. Without even being allowed to rest my weary feet, Danny gave me work. Housekeeping. It was a joke, wasn't it? My nails were not made for menial jobs. Life here was horrible. I had to get up so stupidly early that it was still dark out, then clean a dozen dusty old bedrooms. After that, I would do the laundry, dry the towels and bedding, fold them, and arrange them neatly into each room. At noon, I also had to help the chef here, Anna, prepare lunch, and I was also forced to wash a mountain of gross dishes. I had never done such silly chores like this at home. Instead, they were always done for me didn't expect them to be this exhausting. <laughs> you should put them in order, so they won't break. Ugh, where did this nosy guy come from? Are you lecturing me? I replied crankily and walked away. Suddenly, oh no, this was the ninth time I'd broken stuff since I'd arrived here. And that wasn't counting my poor broken nails. I quickly bent down to clean up, but ouch! I cut my finger on one of the pieces. The guy quickly ran over and bandaged my wound. Bond, that's my name. Huh? What's this? Did he just wink at me? My heart was pounding. Um, I mean, he was cute. Yeah, he was really cute. Um, I'm K- Clara, go do something else. Leave this to me. Realizing that I'd been staring at Bond for a while, I hurriedly got up and rushed to the kitchen. Nice to meet you, Clara. I'm your new colleague. Well, that's not so bad. At least I have someone to share my workload with and to chat. The next morning, I was cleaning the floor, half asleep, when Bond came over, put an AirPod in my ear, and winked at me. Imagine you're dancing. Then you won't feel so tired anymore. Okay, this sounded kinda lame, but at least no one else was around to see me, so I decided to just go with it. So I gave it a try, with Bond, <laughs> and I relaxed a little. Well, I didn't expect it to be so much fun.
That night, as I was about to turn off the light, I heard a knock at the door. It was Bond. He wanted to show me a secret, so he took my hand and led me to the beach. Yes, we were holding hands, and his hand was really warm. He took me to a sandy beach and shone his flashlight at his feet. Something was moving under the fine white sand. Ew! What was that? I clung to his arm in fear. Aww, little turtles, I exclaimed as they slowly emerged from under the sand. Yes, they're cute, aren't they? Let's give them a hand. They have to get to the sea before dawn. I hesitated because I thought this was so stupid. When the sun rises, they'll be easily spotted and eaten by predators. Fine, since Bond pleaded, I had no choice but to sacrifice my sleep to escort the baby turtles to the sea. Why would their mom just abandon her babies like that? Their mom protected them when they were eggs, and now it's time for them to start fending for themselves. I bet they don't mind. You see, they're all trying their best to crawl towards the sea. But it was us who helped them. Then they'll be very grateful to you. And so am I. Whoa, I never felt like this before. It felt like my heart was aching, but in a good way? Thinking about it, I suppose this was the first time I'd ever helped anyone before. Now I kinda understood why my parents did what they did. They just wanted me to be more independent and stop hanging around with those vain, show-off girls. They sure would be pleased if they could see me now, with this sweet and gentle guy. He was the total opposite of the rich boys back home. When I was hurt, he made sure I was okay. He opened my eyes to new experiences, and he didn't try to impress me with dumb flowers and expensive gifts. I've been thinking about Bond all day, and this is the 1,001st time I've peeked at him. I think I'll have to confess my feelings before I go crazy. So that evening, after finishing all my work, I knocked on Bond's door. Huh? Why was a teary-eyed Miss Anna standing there? Then she told me the shocking truth. Bond had left without saying goodbye. Panicked, I walked into the room, but there was nothing left of his. Nothing! No! This couldn't be happening! I hadn't even had a chance to confess yet! The next day, I felt so down, it sucked not having Bond here. But then in my zombie state, I accidentally picked up the newspaper at the front desk. O.M.G. On the front page was a picture of... Bond! God, I couldn't believe it! He was the son of a famous billionaire and they were looking for him! Turns out, I wasn't the only one who'd run away from home. But why did he leave so suddenly? He could have told me the truth. He could have said bye! Ugh! My untold feelings for him felt like an unreachable splinter in my side. I couldn't carry on like this. I needed to find Bond. With my meager salary, I got on the train back to the city, imagining seeing Bond again. This is without a doubt the most nervous I'd ever been in my entire life. It didn't matter how much I pleaded my case and explained that I was Bond's friend. The security guards refused to let me in. I was about to leave when suddenly I saw Bond from afar. He was with a girl. What in the world is this? I tried to strain my eyes to see. My god, isn't that me? No, it's the girl I hired to pretend to be me. What was she doing with Bond? And why did they look so close? Could it be? Yes, it's me, Kate, here again. When I traded places with my doppelganger to avoid being stuck in some ghastly summer school, I didn't expect to end up penniless and having to work in some dusty old homestay. But I suppose it wasn't all bad, as I got to meet Bond. So imagine my surprise when I discovered that not only was he a runaway rich kid like me, but I also caught him hanging out with... Moi! Well, the other me. Ugh! 
I hired her to pretend to be me, not to be with my man. Um, looks like it was time to return to my normal life. Miss, without a letter of invitation, I can't let you in. Are you kidding me? Why do I need an invitation to enter my own home? How could they not recognize me? Right at that moment, Clara gracefully got out of a luxury car and entered my house. I shouted over to her, but on seeing me, she gave me a confused look. Then she whispered something to the security guard and went straight inside. Sorry, Miss Kate doesn't know you. Please leave. Huh? How dare she? She wasn't Miss Kate. I was. Did she really think she could treat me like this? Ugh! I'd show her who the real rich girl was. But as I was leaving, I caught a glimpse of myself in a car window. Oh my gosh, I looked horrendous. My once bouncy curls, perfectly made up face, and glamorous clothing were no more. Instead, I had a greasy ponytail, my skin was completely bare, and I was in worn old clothes. No wonder the security guards didn't recognize me. I barely recognized my own self. Well, well, well. How comfortable it is to be back in my room, doll up again, and just take back what's mine. How did you get in here? This is my room, remember? I can run away by myself, so you bet I can sneak back into my own room. Listen here, fake me. Mission's over. It's time you left. What mission? Are you crazy? Get your filthy hands off my stuff! Wow, immerse yourself in the role much, huh? Enough. Now give me my life back. What if I don't? Don't you dare? You think my parents won't recognize me? Seeing as I've been impersonating you for an entire month without question, I doubt it. Besides, they're on a month-long business trip in Dubai. So, who will help you now, huh? O-M-G. She was so arrogant, unruly, and obnoxious. Worst of all, she reminded me of someone. Me! Well, the old me. Why didn't I realize before how awful I actually was? Ignoring Clara's defiant face, I took out my phone and made a FaceTime call to my parents. They had to spot it was me straight away, right? Wrong. They gave us both looks of shocked confusion and they couldn't seem to tell us apart. So they told the two of us to stay at home for the time being while they made arrangements to come back. Huh, is it that hard to distinguish your own daughter from a hick? But anyway, she'll be out of here soon enough. The next morning, we went back to school. Claire looked so trashy in her tiny miniskirt. Jeez, this wasn't a nightclub. Oh, Kate, you look outstanding. Where did you buy it from? <laughs> That's it. My friends will always be able to tell me apart from a fraud. But hang on. No! They were moving toward... Clara! Huh? Are they actually praising her? Wow, there's another Kate here. But it's a faulty version. A lame one. <laughs> my panicked feeling increased as all my friends and Clara burst out laughing. You guys don't recognize me? I'm the real Kate, the one you all idolize, the trendsetter around here. Everyone looked at me in bewilderment, and then back to Clara. Look at her pathetic appearance. She's just trying to be a copy of me. After that, Clara and her friends left. Jeez, all it took was one summer away for Clara to turn into me. Ugh, why doesn't anyone recognize me? Seeing Clara living my life with my friends was driving me crazy. I was now seen as the copycat version of my own self. Ugh, no way was I losing to this crafty charlatan. So the next day, I decided to show everyone how charismatic I was. After all, form is temporary, but class is permanent. And soon, everyone would realize who the real Kate was. Right? <laughs> I waited until Clara was out of the way, then I went over to my group and started recalling some of our old stories that only the real me could possibly know. When Clara returned, 
Oh my. She looked furious. <laughs> One day, when I just entered the cafeteria, I saw my group making a nerdy girl run errands for them. Poof, your mother is the school's measly janitor. So you too are just our dog's body. Now hurry up and go get us some ketchup. When the girl was bringing it to them, one of them tripped her foot and made her face fall down on the plate of sauce. The whole group burst into laughter. I rushed to help her up and scowled at the clique chic girls. <sighs> they may have looked stylish, but beneath it all, they were monsters. But worst of all, it was my fault, as it was my group. I would basically created them. What's wrong with her mom being a janitor? That doesn't mean she has to serve you guys. As I can see, all of your legs and arms are working fine. So go get stuff yourself. Wow, look who it is. Do you all believe she's just a lousy replica of mine now? The true clique chic Kate wouldn't blurt out such nonsense. Clique chic all looked me up and down, then gave me disgusted looks. Too much of a saint. What a hypocrite, Kate would never say that. Obviously, she's the fake one. Those whispers made me so angry that I turned as red as the ketchup. Fine, pretend to be me all you want, but you and I both know I'm the real me, and I'm better than ever. You won't be able to keep up that act for much longer. And then to the surprise of the others, I stormed off. That night, social media was awash with my news. Can you believe I was actually being mocked for being the copycat while Clara was being praised? Talk about ridiculous. I scrolled through my old photos and scanned over some of the thousands of likes and compliments. I'd lived in the admiration of everyone. Ugh. Maybe I needed to go back to being the arrogant and snobby old Kate, and then everything would be over. Right? <sighs> Only I couldn't do it. I couldn't be that heartless and selfish version of myself anymore. So how could I end this whole mess of my own making? Ah, there was another way. If there's only one Kate who showed up, there wouldn't be any more fakers. Oh, seems like it's going to be a really good day at school today. But such a shame that our sweet Clara might not be able to join us. Everyone greeted me warmly as they thought that the imposter who was smeared on social media yesterday had been too embarrassed to show her face. Even so, I didn't want to hang out with these stuck-up mean girls anymore. The clique chic group should be disbanded. As I was deep in thoughts, out of nowhere, a nerd blocked my way with a bouquet of flowers. He timidly held them out to me and people began buzzing and pointing. The girls in the group took pictures of him and urged me forward. That's our Kate with her irresistible charms. <laughs> Someone's essay's ready for next week. I hesitated, not knowing what to say. I didn't want to accept love from someone I didn't like. People started to frown at my silence. Then a few voices of doubt arose. Why doesn't she accept the bouquet as usual? Perhaps she's not? I saw red. Suddenly, I found this whole pretending to flirt with someone just to have them do our homework absurd. And above all else, it wasn't fair to him. You don't have the guts to do it, do you? Because you're not Kate. Startled, I turned around to see Clara taking the bouquet of flowers from the nerd's hand. I snatched it back angrily. He likes me, not you. He likes Kate, and I'm Kate. That Clara was just so shameless to say that. Did she really think she could be me? Did she think being mean and snobby made her the it girl? How shallow of her. Yes, if it was Kate from the past, I would have received that bouquet and made him do my homework. But the present Kate won't do that. Do it yourself. Stop relying on others to do everything for you. As for you, Clara, let me tell you this. Despite your best efforts, you'll never be me. Once a liar, always a liar, you counterfeit. I was done here. I was the real me. And if they couldn't see that, then whatever. So I walked away. Suddenly, a hand pulled me back. It was the nerd. Sorry, but... 
I really don't like you in that way. You really don't have feelings for me? Are you sure? Upon his words, he took off his wig, glasses, and the mole on his face. Bond? Is it really you? I was so shocked that I couldn't believe my eyes. Bond handed me the bouquet and said, You won't say no, will you? Of course, how could I say no? I led him to an empty classroom to talk. Um, why are you here? And what's with the disguise? After I left the homestay, I went back home. My parents did what they always do, and tried to make out like money could solve everything by throwing an extravagant party. I was lingering out of the way when, to my surprise, you walked in with your family. Huh? What party? Oh, he must mean Clara. He continued, I went over to talk to you, but you acted like you'd never met me before, so it didn't take me long to work out this girl wasn't you. I was worried, so I called the homestay and they said you'd left. Determined to solve this mystery, I went to your school and found everyone was in a frenzy, as out of nowhere two Kates had appeared. Both of them were it girls and nothing like the homestay Kate I knew, so in order to suss out the real one, I disguised myself, and my plan worked, as here you are. You're such a trickster! <laughs> but I still have one question. Why did you suddenly leave the homestay that day? So, turns out his passion for marine life led him to run away from his disapproving parents and go to a coastal homestay. Only, when he realized from the newspaper that his parents were looking for him, he didn't want to get the homestay into trouble, so he returned home. You should have at least said goodbye to me. I was so down when you left like that. Did you know that? Kate, I'm truly sorry. I never meant to upset you. Actually, I'm kind of crazy about you. After that, Bond drove me home. And guess what? Looks like my parents were back earlier than expected. As for the fake Clara... She'd already fled the scene with a load of my clothes and makeup. But, ugh, whatever. At least she'd finally gone. So, what now? Well, I'm dating Bond, and I'm so happy with him. At weekends, I go to the coast and help him with his marine animal research, which is actually a lot of fun. And I don't even mind having salty air lips. <laughs> I never take my parents for granted anymore and I never force other students to carry out dumb errands for me. And of course, clique chic was no longer a thing. Everyone at school had grown used to the new and improved version of me. Obviously, I'll always be the it girl who sets the trends, but only the decent ones. Hi, I'm Belle. I'm 18, and today is my first day at Boston College. Isn't that cool? Oh, wait, I think I hear someone crying. Why don't we go shopping? It'll make you feel better. No, I don't want anything. Just leave me alone. Wait, that sobbing girl? She looked so familiar to me. Is that her? What are you looking at? The other girl snapped at me. Jeez, why so serious? The next day I decided to do the neighborly thing, so I brought an apple pie over to her. The door opened and whoa. She looked like she'd tackled a tornado. Her hair and clothes were messy, and her eyes were swollen. Oh, um, hi. I'm Belle. I just moved here. Nice to meet you. Oh, hi. I'm Laura. Yes, Laura. Laura from elementary school. How could she not know it was me? Then my childhood memories started flushing back to me. Back then, I was super shy because my family had financial problems. I was always in worn clothes. I guess this made me an easy target for some mean kids. Then one day, when I was walking home from school, those kids followed me, pushed me over, and started laughing as they searched through my backpack. But then a luxurious car pulled up alongside us, and Laura peered through the window and said to them, Leave her alone, else I'll revoke your invites to my party. After that, Laura left before I could even thank her, and the mean kids hurried off. Through my young eyes, I saw her as an angel. She was pretty and popular, 
but she'd still stopped to help me. Unfortunately, right after that incident, my parents thought it was best to transfer me to another school, and I never saw Laura again. Well, until now. Thanks for the apple pie. Come in if you want. Oh, yes, if you don't mind. I walked inside, and oh my. Her room was a mess. There were clothes everywhere, trash on the floor, and dirty dishes overflowing in the basin. Something bad must have happened to her to get her this down in the dumps. So, I asked her what was up, and she told me her boyfriend had just broken up with her. The worst part was she left her family and friends behind to move here for him. But then he ended things without even giving her an explanation. Poor Laura. The breakup was over two months ago, but it still seemed to be fresh in her mind. I tried comforting her, but the more I did, the more she cried. Ah. <sighs> The next day, I decided to swing by and check if she was okay. The door was ajar, so I peered inside and saw a glum-looking Laura sitting on the floor, hugging and sniffing something. Laura? What are you doing? <laughs> I found this, and I just miss him so much. Oh. Turns out she was looking through her closet for her sweater, and ended up finding her ex's hoodie. That's it. Enough was enough. It was time I finally returned the favor and saved Laura just like she'd saved me back in fifth grade. You'll never move on if his things are staring you in the face. I told her it was time to get her ex's belongings. And you know what? She had a whole big box of his stuff. I took a look, and that's when I saw a photo of them. This is... him? I couldn't hide my surprise. Yeah, that's Cameron, my boyfriend, or... Did I say my ex... Why do you ask? Oh, um, nothing. Just thank God you're not together anymore. The word jerk is written all over his face. Then we threw the whole box in the dorm's dumpster downstairs. The poor girl looked like she wanted to jump right in there to retrieve it. I'm going to help you get over this guy. I promise. You're about to discover just how fun being single can be. Oh, you're single too? Um, yeah, of course. Now that her ex's stuff was in the trash where it belonged, it was time to live our best happy single lives. Each morning, I dragged Laura jogging around the park with me and showed her how to prepare delicious healthy meals. Can you believe that she didn't even know how to boil an egg without burning the pot? Yep, I know. It's shocking. Then one time, her basin blocked up and she was totally freaking out. I came to the rescue with my trusted plunger and showed her how to fix it. Easy peasy. And best of all, no man was needed to save these damsels. <laughs> Next, I needed to show Laura how to enjoy life because all she seemed to do was slump around her room. So, on Saturday night, I dragged her and Kayla to this really cool bar. Man, I'm thirsty. Martinis? My treat. Hold up, Laura. Do you want to know how to get free drinks? And then I told her to walk past some guys, flip her hair, and wink at them with the cutest smile on her face and... Bam. Just like that, we had drinks bought for us. Laura seemed very happy with what she just accomplished, and that made me happy too. Only Kayla didn't look so thrilled about it. Maybe her martini tasted too bitter. <laughs> While we were having fun, my phone suddenly rang. Oh my god. I've been longing for that call. But why now? I put it on silent and continued chatting. Why aren't you answering? Oh, it's nothing. Are you sure? Seems important. Yeah, no worries. Before I could finish my sentence, I suddenly heard someone calling Laura. Laura? Oh, Jack! Hi, it's been so long. I'm surprised to see you here. Are you alone or with friends? And before Laura could introduce us, the guy stared at me. Hmm, hey, I think I know you. Nah, I don't think we've ever met. I immediately denied it. But this guy was so insistent... He kind of made me uncomfortable, that I accidentally knocked over my glass. Then I had to make a mad dash to the bathroom to clean myself up. Anyway, that night was great. I was kind of proud of myself for proving to Laura that being single wasn't so bad after all. But then, the very next morning, disaster struck. Kayla ordered me into Laura's room, where she was curled up on her bed, holding a photo of her and Cameron. Ugh, so much for getting rid of all reminders of him. Laura sobbed out that Jack told her that Cameron was seeing someone else, and now Kayla had come up with an idea to get revenge on him. I know this hurts, but please, just ignore him and move on with your life. Pfft, what do you know? 
Are you on Laura's side or her jerky exes? I just ignored Kayla and tried to talk to some sense into Laura. Thank God she seemed to listen to me and cancel the revenge plan. Oh boy, Kayla looked furious. I went back to my dorm and let out a relieved sigh. And suddenly my phone got an incoming message. Can't wait to see you tomorrow. Okay, the truth is, I'm seeing this guy who I like loads, but I didn't want to rub Laura's face in it, so I haven't mentioned it to her. The next morning, I put on a cute dress, did my makeup, styled my hair, and excitingly stepped out of my dorm room to find stacks of trash bags in front of my door. Who on earth did this? I dragged them downstairs to put them in the dumpster. When I found all my mail in there covered in trash juice. Ew. Was this a prank or what? Whatever. I didn't have time for this. I was already late. I arrived at a gallery and saw that he was already here looking at a painting. Hey, sorry for being late. He turned around with a smile. Well, you're worth the wait, you know. Okay, please let me explain. So, yep, that's Cameron, but it's not what you think. I met him the other month as he was helping out at an event for new students. He didn't care that I wore thrift store clothes and that my sneakers weren't cool. Instead, he saw past these things and started talking to me first. So, Jack was there too, which is why he sorta recognized me. I've been texting Cameron loads, and I must confess, I think I do have feelings for him. But don't get me wrong, I didn't know Laura was his ex until I saw the photo of them. Oh boy, that sure shocked me to the core. I didn't want to tell her and not only break her heart all over again, but also destroy our friendship. That's also why I didn't care to answer Cameron's call in front of Laura when we were at the bar. And I was super lucky that Jack didn't recognize me that night, or it would have been a total disaster. I know I needed to tell Lara the truth, but first, she just needs a little more time to get over Cameron. Ugh. I went home from the date with a big smile on my face, but what I saw made it instantly fade. My entire makeup collection was smashed up. What? Who would do something so mean? It took me ages to save up to buy all that. As I checked to see if any of it was salvageable, I saw a long blue hair nestled amongst the carnage. Furious, I was about to go confront her, but Kayla and Lara had already appeared in my doorway. Why did they look so angry? How could you befriend me like that when all along you were seeing my ex? So your you don't need a man speech was all just one big lie so you could take my guy, huh? <clears throat> and do you really think Cameron would like a girl like you? You can't even afford a decent handbag. Right. Let me tell you this. You will never be like one of us. And you'll never be good enough for Cameron. How could Laura think of me like that? I truly wanted to help her. Like she'd helped me. I totally only have good intentions, Laura. I had no idea he was your ex when we first met. The only reason I didn't tell you sooner was because I knew you needed more time to heal. And I didn't want to hurt you because... I adore you and value our friendship. Do you remember fifth grade? I was being teased by these kids and you were the only one who stood up for me. I just wanted to return the favor and help you too. But hearing you say that stuff makes me so sad. After that, I shooed them out of my room and locked the door. I refused to go to lectures and ignored all Cameron's calls and messages. Maybe Lara and Kayla were right. Cameron and I weren't meant to be. We were from two different worlds. Eventually, a few days later, I had to go outside. Well, because I ran out of food. When I passed by a coffee shop, I saw them. Cameron and Laura sitting together. <sighs> so Kayla was right. A rich guy like Cameron would never like an ordinary girl like me. I couldn't live in the same dorm as Laura anymore. So I was packing my stuff to move out of there. Suddenly, I heard Laura's voice. Are you running away from your problems like I did? I ignored her and continued packing. You know, I met Cameron, and we had a long talk. He finally told me why he broke up with me. It was because I was too dependent on him, and I couldn't do anything on my own. But you, you helped me stand on my own feet. And for that, I can never thank you enough. Laura, I honestly always wanted to tell you the truth. I know, but it doesn't matter anymore. 
You know, the important thing now is to enjoy my independent single life, right? Oh, I got you these. Kayla was way out of line destroying your things. Also, I think there's someone who wants to see you. Suddenly there was a knock on the door. I opened it and, oh my god. Standing there with a huge bouquet of flowers was Cameron. So it looks like I can continue getting to know Cameron now. And I don't have to move out anymore. But do you know what the best part of all is? I have my friend back. I'd just climbed back into the room when suddenly I heard a voice. Jasmine, how come you're only getting home now? I turned around to find Emma standing there. That's my business. Don't come home late like this again, okay? You'll be grounded if your dad finds out. I shrugged and closed my door without saying anything. Yep, that's Emma, my stepmom. She doesn't actually care, she just pretends to. If it wasn't for her telling my dad to forbid me from singing, then I wouldn't have to sneak out to go practice like this. Different day, same story. Yet again, I've had to lie about going to my singing practice. Honestly, I can't wait to be an adult so I can do whatever I want. Dad, I'm going over to Mix to study, I said as I headed for the door. Suddenly, Emma pulled me back and handed me a bottle. Huh? Licorice tea? Drink this after practicing. It helps keep your voice clear. Then she winked at me. Huh? So she knew I'd lied about where I was going, yet still she'd helped me? Maybe, just maybe, I've been misunderstanding her this whole time? Later that night, Emma suggested we should go for a picnic on the weekend, and for once, I excitedly agreed. But when the weekend rolled around, there was this hectic snowstorm. Ugh. Emma kept looking out at the snow with disappointment written across her face. Ugh. That's when the idea hit me. How about we have an indoor picnic? Yes, that's right. That's a great idea. And so we set up the tent right in our living room and we were having the best time when suddenly the doorbell rang. I got up to answer it and standing there covered in snow was a woman. She suddenly ran at me and said, Oh my gosh, Jasmine, you've grown up so fast. I've missed you so much. Before I could understand what was going on, Dad shouted, Megan, I can't believe you have the nerve to show up here like this. I know you won't accept my apology, but you don't understand. I had to see her. I've missed her every single day. Oh my God. So that woman was my mother? I couldn't hold back my tears and ran straight over to hug her. I swear I had been waiting for this moment for years. Mom gently stroked my hair and then turned to my dad. Can I stay here for a while? Just to make it up to my beloved daughter after such a long time being apart, Elvis? Are you joking? Get out of my house. Dad, please let her stay. Please. But no matter how much I begged, Dad wouldn't give in. And so I turned to Emma for help. Elvis, just let her stay here. If Jasmine wants to be with her mom this badly, we should let them have some time together. Come on, darling. I looked at Emma with so much appreciation, then turned those puppy eyes towards my dad. And eventually, he reluctantly nodded his head. Yay! I shouted and led mom to my room. From that day onwards, I spent most of my free time with her. We went to the movies together, shopping together, and honestly, it was the happiest I'd ever felt. One day, I was listening and humming along to my music when mom came in. Wow, so you also love singing? It must be genetic. Back then, if I hadn't been so passionately obsessed with music, which drove your dad crazy, I might never have left you like that. Now I regret it. So much, Jasmine. I put my arms around her and softly said, After all these years, I still think about that lullaby. Can you sing it to me? Which one? I sang you many lullabies back then. It's Don't Know Why by Nora Jones. Oh, right. That one. Then she started singing. I swear to God, her voice was like an angel. But strangely, it didn't give me any of the feelings I had as a kid. Was it because I have grown up? While I was absorbed in my thoughts, I suddenly saw Emma's shadow at my doorway. 
but when she met my eyes, she hurried down the stairs. Huh? Why was Emma crying? I was so confused. She must be jealous of our relationship, Mom said. Yeah, probably, since she'd been married to my dad for three years, but we'd never been close. That evening, when I went to the kitchen with Mom to set the table, she suddenly shouted, Oh my gosh! Why did Emma make chicken parmigiana? Doesn't she know that your dad hates this? Then she took the plate and threw it in the trash, saying she would order takeaway instead. Huh? Dad hates this? He always complimented Emma on her signature dish. Before I could react, Emma entered the room. As soon as she saw her chicken in the trash, she glared at Mom. Things then got so awkward. Emma had skipped dinner. Mom also tried to start a conversation with Dad a few times, but he ignored her. Ugh, I felt so bad for Mom. In my dad's eyes, there was only Emma now. But my mother had done nothing wrong. She just wanted to pursue her passion. Later that night, I was heading to the pantry to get some snacks when I heard Emma yelling at Mom. Megan, for old time's sake, I didn't bring up anything from the past, but you can't just do whatever you want. How dare Emma yell at my mom like that? As soon as Emma left, I ran over to my mom asking her what had happened. She hesitated for a while, then told me the whole story. It turned out mom and Emma used to be in the same band when they were young. And since mom was always the lead singer, Emma had begrudged her ever since. Perhaps she has never gotten over it. Ugh, I didn't expect Emma to be so mean. So from that day on, I began to show my attitude towards Emma. I didn't let her go to the parent-teacher conference like I had promised before. And I even forbade Mick, my best friend, from talking to her every time he came over. Mom, how did you and dad meet back in the day? Well... Back then, your dad was a waiter at the lounge I used to sing at every weekend. We quickly fell in love and started leaving love letters for each other at our secret spot. Ew, how cheesy. It's called romantic, you silly. At that time, we put our initials at the end of every letter. Suddenly, there was some noise at the door, and I turned to see dad standing right behind us. What do you mean, our initials? It represented our two favorite characters' names from that movie. Yes. It was the initials of Monica and Quincy in the movie Love and Basketball. Dad gaped at Emma in surprise as she continued. I was the one writing letters to you that year. But when I got to the meeting spot, I saw you and Megan together. So I left. Dad and Emma looked at each other, then turned to stare at Mom. Actually, back then I liked you so much that I pretended to be Emma. But it's not that important. In the end, you were still into me and we got along really well, right? I can't believe you lied to me like this for all these years. Then dad angrily left the room followed by Emma. As for mom, she was sitting there, tears pouring from her eyes. Okay, so mom was definitely in the wrong. But did dad need to treat her like that? Who doesn't make mistakes from time to time? And anyway, it's because of my mom's mistake that I'm even here, right? From that day onwards, the atmosphere in the house was so intense. Dad ignored mom, and Emma always gave mom hateful looks. Until one day. I'd just gotten home from school when I saw my dad excitedly running towards me saying, Emma is pregnant. You're going to have a little brother or sister. Wow. I'd always wanted to have a sibling. I couldn't believe it. So that night, my family threw a party to celebrate. And mom also congratulated dad and Emma. And thanks to that, the tension between the three of them started to ease. Phew. But a few days later, for some reason, Dad found out that I'd lied about going studying with Mick. He was furious and grounded me for a week. I was sullenly playing on my iPad when Mom entered the room. Emma must be the snitch. Now that she's pregnant, she wants Dad to be angry with you, so he'll give all his love to her and the baby. Well, that just made sense. The other day, I'd even seen Emma whispering something to Dad, and as soon as he heard it, he got mad. Ugh, such a two-faced woman. I had to sort this out. And so I set up a fun plan for my stepmom. One time I made her orange juice using powdered cheese. And she ended up spitting it out all over dad. <laughs> then I unscrewed the shower head to add blue food coloring. And that's how I gave her a Smurf makeover. It was hilarious hearing her horrid scream from the bathroom. Another time I snuck into Emma's room. Trying to put flour in her hair dryer, I was rummaging through the bedside table looking for her hair dryer when suddenly I saw a DVD labeled Jasmine 0311. Huh? 
What's this? Why was my name on it? Curious, I went back to my room to play it. And then I couldn't believe my eyes. On the screen, Emma was carrying a baby and singing a lullaby to her. This melody. Wasn't it the song Don't Know Why? So that baby was me? But Emma couldn't sing. Could she? Her voice was weak and sounded hoarse. What did this mean? I rushed to show my dad the DVD. Emma told me not to talk about this, but since you already know, I won't hide it anymore. Then he told me everything. Turns out my mom left for a rich man when I was only two years old, and it was Emma who came and helped my dad take care of me during my younger years. Oh my gosh. What? So all those memories of my mom's warm hugs and lullabies were all actually of Emma? A feeling of guilt welled up in my heart. I had to do something to apologize to Emma. So the next day, I asked Mick to go to the mall to help me buy her a gift. As I was passing a coffee shop, I suddenly saw my mom sitting with some guy. Without thinking much, I quickly pulled Mick to a nearby table and eavesdropped on them. Honey, how's the money? You know how pushy the creditors are, and they're getting kinda aggressive. Don't worry, it won't be long now. My daughter's on my side. She'll help me kick her stupid stepmom out. Then my ex-husband will soon follow her wish and volunteer to give me money. What? What was going on? Had mom come back just for dad's money? I was about to go confront her when my phone rang. It was dad. Jasmine, go to the hospital right away. Emma is in the emergency room. By the time I got there, I saw my dad sitting outside the ER with his head in his hands. After a while, the doctor came out and said, Both mother and baby are okay. Next time, please pay more attention to the patient's food allergy. How could you eat stuff you're allergic to? You must be more careful, okay? Yeah, Emma always took good care. It didn't make sense. Unless... my mom... I was about to tell dad about what I'd seen at the mall when mom suddenly appeared, eagerly asking about Emma's situation. Unable to stand her pretense any longer, I shouted, Mom, drop the act. It was you who did all of this, wasn't it? Jasmine, what nonsense are you uttering? Furious, I immediately told them the whole story I've heard. Megan, I could forgive you for the old letter story and for trying to sabotage my voice, but the fact that you wanted to harm my baby is unforgivable. It turns out the stuff from the past that she mentioned before was that my mom harmed her to destroy her voice. So that's why dad didn't let me sing, for fear that it would cause Emma pain. Suddenly, Mom burst out laughing. <laughs> I don't need your pity. You were so lucky to have such a beautiful voice and a wonderful man by your side. And even now, you're still trying to take the life that should have been mine. Megan, give it up already. You need to stop this. Mom was about to say something, but I interrupted her. Mom, please just go. I'm so ashamed to have a mother like you. Then I burst into tears. She got up and left without even so much as a glance back at us. Emma took me into her arms. I was afraid that you would be disappointed. That's why I hid everything from you. I'm sorry for treating you so badly. She gently patted my head, and I felt like I was back in my childhood, where she'd held me and sang lullabies. It was so comforting. Finally, peace has returned to my family. I'm so fortunate to have Emma as a stepmom. And pretty soon... My little bro or sis will be here, and I can't wait. Mom, come here and see what Agnes has done to my dress. Oh no, what now? Look at this, Mom. It's crumpled. This is all your fault. I told you that this requires hand washing. That means by hand. Oh, don't cry, honey. I'll buy you a new one. You can give that one to Agnes. It's yours now. New dress. Happy, huh? Can we go right now, Mom? Then let's have pizza after that. I'm so tired of Agnes's pretentious fine dining dishes. Of course, honey. Yeah, I know. That sure looked like a scene from Cinderella, right? Only stuff like that was a daily occurrence in this house. If I was adopted, then it'd be easier to understand why Mom favored my sister over me, but nope. I am also her actual daughter. Growing up with Jenna as my big sister was a nightmare. She's always been the golden child, while I was treated like a thorn in their side. 
If something broke, then I got the blame. When Jenna stole my things, then mom just said I should be flattered. Then there were the birthday parties. Over the years, Jenna had it all. Fairy themed ones, magicians, a petting zoo, and cupcake towers. As for me, all I ever got was a card with a wrinkled $20 note in it. It was the same thing with studying. If she broke her string of D's with a C, mom rewarded her with jewelry and makeup. Me? Just one C out of usual straight A's, and mom say, Oh, why did I even get my hopes up? Sometimes I do wonder if all this shabbiness is because Jenna's always been pretty and popular. She's basically a mini-me version of mom. While I guess I'm more reserved, and I don't really look like mom. Anyways, despite living in a house full of darkness and unfairness, I still have my own passion, which is culinary. To be honest, I'm addicted to those TV cooking shows and always try to find ways to follow them. My dream is to become a head chef in a five-star restaurant. At school, Jenna always blanks me. She hangs out with this group of girls who are all obsessed with the same things she is, such as makeup, trendy clothes, and TikTok. Jenna does look gorgeous, so it's not surprising that boys usually buzz around her in the hope of catching her attention. Anyway, forget Jenna as I have my best friend Ruth right here. Girl, I swear to God, if I were you, I'd tear up some of her clothes just for my own relief. Nice idea, <laughs> I said while playing with my tray of food as usual. It looks so good, very appetizing. Startled, I looked up to find a pair of dazzling eyes staring back at me. Hi, I'm Roy. That's very neat-handed of you. Before I could say anything, he winked and turned away to his table. That was close, or else he would have seen my tomato red face. <laughs> Looks like someone's on the hot guy's radar. Shut up. It was just being friendly. But no, that night when I got home, Roy in fact did message me. And we had a really long chat. He even asked me to join him for lunch the next day. Yay! This was so exciting. I'd entered the canteen to find Roy was already sitting there waiting for me. But I quickly spotted Jenna's group passing by. And the last thing I need is trouble from my evil sister. So I was actually thinking of walking away. But right at that moment, Roy grinned and waved over at me. OMG, that hot boy over there is waving at you, Jen. A girl flattered Jenna before I could even answer Roy. Jenna quickly fixed her hair, then smiled awkwardly at him. But he walked straight past her and over to me. Here, for you. What kind of first class dishes do we have today? I smiled at Roy and had no choice but to sit down with him, ignoring Jenna's furious glare. Despite the awkward Jenna situation, lunch with Roy was amazing. We started hanging out loads more after that. He's cute, funny, and very supportive towards my culinary dreams. Then one day, Roy handed me a cupcake with a frosted heart on it and asked me to be his girlfriend. Yippee! This was so exciting! So, of course I agreed, but only on the condition that we kept our relationship low-key. I'd never had anything of my own before, so if my mom and sister didn't know about us then they couldn't tarnish it, right? Falling in love is a magical thing. I was just so happy and full of life all of the time. Even doing chores for mom and Jenna didn't dampen my mood. I thought you were only into cooking. So what, you like laundry now? Psst, don't tell me you want to be a fashion designer next. I ignored her and carried on with what I was doing. Actually, I ignored all of mom and Jenna's mocking jibes. The truth was I was way too happy to let them bother me anymore. Soon, Jenna's 17th birthday party arrived, and this time she insisted on having it at this trendy restaurant in town. All of our relatives and her friends were invited, but I decided not to go. It's not like anyone wanted me there anyway, so I didn't think it'd matter. But to my surprise, on the day of the party, Jenna knocked on my bedroom door and begged me to come. Please, Agnes, I want you there on my special day. It won't be the same without you. Then she passed me a bag and left. I opened it, and inside was the most beautiful dress. Okay, so Jenna being nice was strange, but I must admit it felt good to feel wanted for once. So it looks like I was going to the ball. Wow, the party was insane. I'm talking banners, balloons, a whole booth devoted to presents, a menu only serving Jenna's favorite foods. I was sipping my drink feeling awkward when Jenna addressed the room. Hey everyone, thank you so much for coming to my 17th birthday party. Now, there's a very special guest here that I'd like to introduce to you all. It's my new boyfriend, Roy. I watched with horror as Roy appeared out of the crowd and let Jenna link arms with him. 
Huh? What? Why was my boyfriend with my sister? I glared straight at him, but he couldn't meet my gaze. This was terrible. I felt like I couldn't breathe. Panicked, I rushed outside to get some air. Everything of yours will soon be mine, no matter how well you hide it. I turned to see that Jenna was standing there, a huge smirk on her face. How could she be this shameless? I shoved past her and went to find mom. She was shouting at the waiter to bring out more drinks. I went up to her and spluttered out what Jenna had done and how upset I was. Jeez, stop making such a fuss about it. Jenna's your sister, so just be happy for her. Besides, Roy is far more suited to her than you. Ugh, that's it. I can't stand this selfish family anymore. I'm leaving. Yeah, go. Disappear just like your no good father did. That night I showed up at Ruth's house with a bag of my stuff and a teary face. But I knew this could only be temporary, so I still looked around for somewhere else to stay. And eventually I applied for a job as a grocery cashier at a 24-7 gas station. Well, at least I had shelter. One night, a drunk man walked in. Hmm, he didn't look so good. Nothing could lighten a person's mood better than great food, right? The store was quiet, so I took some of the ingredients available and used them to prepare a delicious-looking dish for him. Thank you so much, sweetie. I'm Keith. You have a culinary talent. If you want a better opportunity, come find me. Before I could thank him, he left. Let's see. Bar owner? Hmm. I wasn't old enough to work in a bar, though. I spent the next month juggling school with work, life, and oh boy, was it exhausting. But when I asked for my salary, my boss laughed in my face, saying that since I was only 16, he could only pay me for far less hours than I'd worked? What? That wasn't fair. I worked my butt off on sometimes 12-hour-long shifts. But when I complained, he threatened to report me for stealing food from the store. Ugh, I'd only taken expired food that couldn't be sold anyway. Feeling bummed out, I just quit, and then left. I wandered around the street for a while, then looked up and found myself standing in front of that man's bar. Well, I had nowhere else to go, so I stepped inside and there was Keith, but... Huh? He looked so different. Other than this bar, I also own a fine dining restaurant uptown. If you want, I'd love to train you to become a chef there. Whoa, this was so amazing that I cried with joy. In order to be able to stay overnight at the restaurant, I told him that my parents had passed away and I'd run away from the orphanage. And the man agreed without questioning me twice. Time passed by, and you know what? I loved working at the restaurant. As for Keith, he's such a kind-hearted man. We grew so close, and he became like a father to me. I guess we were two lonely people who helped each other. So, it made sense when he asked to adopt me. Then one busy evening, I was taking food to a table, but then I stopped dead. Sitting there were Jenna and Roy. On seeing me, Jenna sneered out, Oh, you work here? Now that explains why my appetizers were gross. Roy looked embarrassed and begged her to be quiet, which only made her worse. Then seeing what was going on, Alistair, the restaurant supervisor, came to my defense, but it only made Jenna even more heated. Isn't the customer always king? Why are you defending that dumb girl? Miss, this is a fine dining restaurant. Please mind your manners. Agnes here is not only a very talented chef, but she's the owner's daughter, which makes her my boss. So I think I'm within my rights to defend my superiors. Jenna rolled her eyes at me, then walked away in anger, not forgetting to reply, Just you wait, Agnes. Then, seeing my glum face, Alistair invited me out for ice cream after work. Keith happily told us to go and said he'd close the restaurant. As I was licking my ice cream, I noticed people around us shout, Fire! Fire! So I pulled Alistair's hand and ran after them. As the flames came into view, my heart sank when I realized they were coming from... It was the restaurant! Oh no! Keith was still in there! Without giving it a second thought, I charged in there to find him. It was so smoky and impossible to see, but I couldn't give up. Suddenly, I started to go dizzy and lightheaded. Then an arm grabbed me and pulled me out. It was Alistair, and standing next to him was... Keith. Phew! A few days later, the police called Keith. They'd found the culprit who started the fire. As soon as I walked into the police station, I couldn't believe my eyes. It was Jenna. But most surprisingly, when Keith saw my mom, they both turned pale and gave astonished looks. Huh? Did they know each other? So yeah, turns out Keith's mine and Jenna's actual father. When dad was young, he hadn't built his career, but just spent all day in the kitchen. So he was always despised and scolded by my mom. In the end, he couldn't take her belittling of him anymore, so he left. 
Only unbeknown to him, Mom was pregnant with me at the time. So the story she said about Dad running off with his mistress was all lies. I got it now. She despised me because I took after my dad, not her. As soon as Jenna realized he was our dad and he was rich, she put on her Little Miss Sweet act and begged for him to be her dad again. But he just gave her a stern look and said, That fire of yours could have killed us all. Now you have to live with that. Then he took my arm and led me out of there. I always believed my life would one day be better, but I never imagined it'd be as good as this. I now have an amazing dad, a job I'm passionate about, and people who generally care about me by my side. It just goes to show that everything works out perfectly in the end. Annyeonghaseyo! I'm Minzi from Seoul. Do you believe conspiracy theories are real? Because I do. Before I tell you my paranormal story, please like and subscribe. Nothing much to say about myself. I'm timid, introverted, but above all, I have a big ambition to webtoon horror category. Ahem! It's one of a kind, right? I've spent sleepless nights on that. Go kneel in the hallway for 30 minutes. Now! Aw, oh, man. Creepy Mincy is at it again. She wants to haunt the whole class with those ugly doodles or something? Ugly? Well, not as ugly as your... your grandmother. The whole class gasped at my insensitive words. But it's that girl. Supin's fault first. No matter how invested I was into my draft, it only ended up another chance for Supin and her posse to laugh at me. And well, thanks to my poor communication skills, no one wants to be my friend. Well, except Hajun, my childhood friend. He's always been so nice to me. Not to mention he's handsome, friendly, and smart. You could tell I had a crush on him, right? But of course, I have no guts to tell him. <sighs> One day I was riding my bike around when I suddenly saw flyers from Blackwood Publishing, the biggest publisher on Webtoon. They're looking for a comic collaborator. Oh, wow. I could send mine to them. But would I stand a chance? I bet the candidates are way more talented than me. As, I guess I better stop dreaming. Just then a skater kid dashed towards me. I managed to dodge him, but ended up crashing onto the pavement fence. I felt myself flip through the air and then everything went black. When I opened my eyes, I found myself on the hospital bed. Mom and Dad were beside me. They looked like they couldn't believe it, then burst into tears. Mincy, honey, you're finally awake. Thank God. You've been in a coma for the whole month. We were worried sick. Hold on a sec. A whole month in a coma? Was I that seriously injured? It took me a few days to recover and process all of this before going back to school. Bet these kids didn't even notice I was missing class for a month, though. But suddenly, someone sprung on my back. Supin? Oh, here you are, Urichingu! Let's go shopping today! The dress you picked me last time was perfect for my date! W what dress? Am I friends with these mean girls now? And not just them. Everyone else seemed to be friendly to me all of a sudden. They gave me cookies, carried my food tray, and even lent me their notebooks. It's weird, but kind of nice, though. <laughs> Except the only person I cared about just straight up ignored me. Hey, Hajun, wait up. Are you all right? I'm fine. It's none of your concern anyway. Oh, I just want to check in on you. <sighs> Could today get any weirder? Yes, it did. When I came home, I suddenly received an email from Blackwood Publishing. Congratulations! Your digital comic is now officially published on our website. To celebrate your success, please come to our office tomorrow. Huh? Is this a prank? I quickly checked, and it's not. My comics were literally on the headliner. But how? I mustered all the courage and went to the publisher. One step in, and I was overwhelmed by all the facilities. It was all so new to me. But just then, a group of people flocked around me and babbled to me nonstop, like they'd known me before. Yeah, our faith boy group BOF, Boys Over Flowers, is holding a concert tonight. Those opas make my emo heartbeat like crazy. Hey, you should come with us. It's going to be so much fun. Eek! Oh, but didn't those boys only lip sync and dance half-heartedly? I even heard people say it's a waste of money going to their concert. Guys, did I say something wrong? Suddenly, I got this chill down my spine. Someone's hands were crawling around my waist. My boo-boo's here. Ah, pervert! I turned around and slapped him in the face. Oh, why did you do that? It's me who should ask this. Why did you touch me? Are you serious? Wait, are you still sulking with me? What? I'm sorry, okay? Now your boyfriend's ready for some snuggles. Boyfriend? Last time I checked, I still had the biggest crush on Hajun. How did I settle for this dandy? The guy was extremely clingy. He wouldn't leave me alone for a sec. Um, don't you have any work to do? 
Work? I am. I'm tending to the artwork of my life. You! <laughs> uh, sure. He also kept insisting on seeing my webtoon draft to help me polish it. Help my butt? He only messed it all up. Not to mention, everything is completely new to me, but everyone acted like I'm so used to all of this. This didn't feel right. Later the day I told my parents about this, and they said the doctor did mention possible memory loss due to brain injury. Hmm, makes sense. But why did they seem all anxious? Over the next few days, I tried to cope with my new life, even though it didn't make any sense at all. Like, I now had my favorite seat in the canteen. You nerds are sitting on Minzy's spot. Move! And apparently, I got a new hobby of skipping school now. What's the matter? You've done this so many times before. <laughs> Why did I even do this? Hajun, on the other hand, still kept distance from me. Until today, we had a project discussion. I tried to break the ice, but he only replied coldly. Why are you here? This whole month you've ditched me to hang out with your hot friends. And now you suddenly want to talk to me again? The, the whole month? What do you mean? You suddenly turned 180 degrees and became this attention seeker. You even pulled stupid pranks on those mean girls and got them to worship you as their leader. B but I was in a coma the whole month. <laughs> You're kidding, right? No. Why would I joke about something like that? Then who was the Mincy I saw every day at school the past month? Was he saying I was in two places at once? How was that possible? Hajun came up with a bunch of conspiracy theories, then concluded that I had an imposter, and she had been replacing me while I was in the hospital. It made perfect sense, but so bizarre at the same time. Seeing how freaked out I was, Hajun gently comforted me, saying he'd help me figure this out. I knew it. He still cared about me deep down. While we were discussing, Su Pin and her clique came interrupting us. Hey, Mincy! What are you doing with this geek? Remember our group meetup today with the Ansan Highs boys? Meet up? Uh, no, I don't think I can- Of course she remembers. Can I come too? I'll keep my mouth zipped. Fine! Now hurry up! Psst, what are you up to? Your imposters must have known about this meetup, so she might be there. This is our chance to catch her. Except, the imposter was nowhere to be found, while well, I was stuck with these self-obsessed dudes. Where's your sass, Mincy? Introduce yourself! Oh, um, hi. Uh, I'm Mincy. You can call me Sugar Mincy. Because I'm sweet as pie and you sure want to take a, a bite. The whole room was dead silence. <laughs> Girl, you got no riz. Wonder why you can't date anyone. Everyone was laughing at my face. Luckily, Hajun grabbed my hand and took me out of there. Here's much better. But I couldn't help but thinking how my life had turned upside down because of that imposter. You all right? You don't have to force yourself into a mold that isn't for you. You're special for who you are. And I prefer this you rather than that imposter. I could feel something churning in my stomach. I'm so glad I always have him by my side. The next morning, Su Pin and her clique suddenly came to apologize for laughing at me. But why? Uh, didn't you come back last night and snapped at us? Told us to publicly apologize to you today? I did? So the copycat did come to the karaoke. Did she intentionally stalk me? Later that day, I went to tell Hajun about this. But why did she have to do that? I mean, she tried to stand up for you, right? I don't know. It must be part of her scheme or something. I have to find her ASAP. Suddenly, I got the notification of the Mean Girls live streaming at a cafe. Wow, guess who it is, guys? Oh, our little rich lady is a waitress. And she dared to look down on us all the time. She steered her cam towards the poor girl they were talking about. And she looked exactly like me. It's her! Hajun and I immediately rushed to the cafe and saw Su Pin and the imposter was about to jump at each other. What's going on here? Mincy? Wh what? Why are there two Mincy's? It's a g g g ghost! Guys, run! You! Who are you? And why did you pretend to be me, you imposter? Mincy, finally we meet. I'm your twin sister. Minha! Sister? We're related? But mom and dad never told me I had a long lost sister. Because you're adopted. They didn't know you had a twin sister who just got adopted before you. You're lying. I'm not. I didn't know this either until my mom was in her final moments. Mom had been sick for a while. So one day she called me to her bed, told me the truth before she drew her last breath. After that, I came to find you, but you were already in the hospital by then. You did wake up after surgery, but once you saw me, you immediately had a seizure and fell back into a coma again. Your parents and I agreed it was best for you if I stayed away and waited until you fully recovered. Meanwhile, you decided to live my life for me? 
Believe it or not, I actually wanted to know what my long-lost twin sister's like. How she's doing. Turns out you're a very talented comic artist, but you're always so insecure. And you're not doing well with the kids at school either. So I wanted to help you out. Sending your webtoon draft, working at the publisher, and fixing those mean girls wagons. I just went with it and ended up getting too wrapped up. Really, did you get wrapped up in dating a random guy under my name too? And what about school? Did my parents agree to let you replace me? It was my idea and I persuaded them. They're just worried about you. I didn't ask for any of these in the first place. Thanks to you, I've become a stranger to my own life. You're happy now? Then I ran away, never wanting to see her again. Still, the worst part was, my parents lied to me. Why did you do it? You didn't tell me I'm adopted, and now you let a stranger replace me? Do you really see me as your child? Minty, honey, of course you're our daughter. Nothing could ever change that. We were afraid you'd be sad if you knew you were adopted. Truthfully, we love you more than you can ever imagine. It's a lot to process, but I had to be strong and stay focused. But soon, whisperings caught my ears. Did you notice Mincy recently is different and even a little bit dull? Where's the cheeky Mincy we're used to? Hey, do you get that bad vibe from Mincy lately? Somehow she'd gone back to being a sullen, creepy nerd again. God, why did everyone keep comparing me to that imposter? Hey, you all right? No, I'm not. Everyone seemed to like Minha and she'd only been here for a month. But nobody cared about me. I do care about you. You always got me. Your handsome friend, ready to the rescue. <laughs> Whatever you say. Come to think of it, your sister only meant well. Despite her way, all she wants is to help you to be more open and show your hidden talents to the world. What Hajun said got me thinking that night. Maybe he's right. If it hadn't been for her, my webtoon would have been forever locked in my iPad. Besides, she's only got me as a family. I've got to see her now. Hey, I came to apologize. I could see you only meant well. And I was only acting ungrateful. I'm sorry. And also, thank you, Uni. There's nothing to be sorry about. It's my fault too for acting on my own and getting myself to fall in love with Si Wu. I haven't told him yet, but I will find the chance. Sorry for dragging you into my stuff. I leapt into her embrace and felt the happy tears running down my cheeks. After the teary reunion, we spent hours catching up with each other. It's like we're reading each other's minds. Must be the twin bond. <laughs> I even invited her to my house and we had a good time. For the next couple days, I only focused on the webtoon and getting to know myself better. With Hajun's help, I now felt more comfortable and confident speaking with others. One day at the publisher, while I was having a little chit-chat break, a colleague rushed in. Minzi, Minzi, did you hear the news? Your webtoon won the first prize of comic award. Comic? The most renowned award in webtoon? Oh my god, I'm dreaming, right? My hard work finally bore fruits. I was celebrating with my colleague when out of nowhere, Si Wu dragged me out. You better announce me as the co-author. I helped you with the sketches, the script, the coloring, yada yada yada, remember? What? You were only messing it up. Do you even know what the story is about? Babe, don't challenge me. Or else, I would tell the director, aka my dad, to kick you out. And by the way, let's break up. Excuse me? You really think I like you? Oh, please. I only do it for your webtoon, babe. Ugh, that dandy jerk. I knew he was no good. But what could I do now? Later, I told Minha everything, and she was heartbroken and begged me to help her sneak into Siwoo's office. So I did. Siwoo, please don't leave me. How could I live without you? Oh, it'll be hard, because I'm irresistible. <laughs> but you gotta let go, babe. You have nothing else to offer me. I already know you don't love me, but I do love you. And I already put a love spell on you. You'll forever be haunted by me. <laughs> Then, Minha fainted, crashed on the floor. Scaredy cat Siwoo was freaking out. Hey, hey, you're not gone, right? Suddenly, the light turned off. What in the Holy Spirit's going on? The light turned on again, and the guy stopped screaming until he saw me. Hi, babe. Ah, what, why are, what are you? You don't recognize me. It's me. Minji, in spirit form. Stay the heck away from me. After every despicable thing you've done to me. Please, please. Come with me, you crooked. To, to, where? To the other side. He was so scared his eyes went white. Then he fainted. <laughs> Serves you right. And let me introduce my Ekip with Minha, who should win Oscars for that performance, and Hajun, who's behind the light effect. Didn't think of that, did you? 
After that, Siwu kept insisting I was some spiritual force that haunted this place. Then eventually, he quit the job. And of course, I had the full copyright of my webtoon and was eligible to receive the comic award. My career has just begun as I decided to continue to work at Blackwood. Mom and Dad also decided to adopt Minha into our family, and we could finally be together. That's the magic I wanted to tell you. This unexpected event changed my life for the better. Chance doesn't come twice, right? You have to grasp it. By the way, I want to ask, do you guys have any unexpected events that changed your entire life? Tell us in the comments below. Hang on, here's one more thing I have to do for the old shy me. Hajun, uh, I've been wanting to tell you something. The past event got me thinking, if I don't start telling you how I feel now, I might regret it later. So, Kim Hajun, I like you. So, so much. Finally, it took you that long. When you were in hospital, you weren't the Minzi I knew, which freaked me out thinking what if I couldn't see the real you anymore. It's comforting that you're still here, because I got a huge crush on you too. Yeah, here's another load of bills to add to the pile. Oh, hey, I'm Zoe, a recent graduate turned office worker with a lousy wage. I could barely afford to pay for food and rent, let alone think about my college debt. It wouldn't matter so much if it was just me, as I could live off of noodle soup. But I also had Birdie to think about, my little sister. Oh, she's back from school. Zoe, I found Daddy today! Huh? I looked at her with a wry smile. Actually, this was nothing new. You see, our parents died when Birdie was just a toddler, so now... She longed to have parents just like her friends did. She often said to me, Zoe, you're like my mommy, but Clara and Polly have daddies too, and I want one. She was so innocent that whenever she saw a friendly looking man on the street, she'd ask me, is that my daddy? <laughs> come on, come here. How was school today? Daddy is very handsome and he lives in a big house. Come on, I'll take you to him. Oh my lord, this wasn't a house, it was a mansion! Confused, I was about to question Bertie on this, but she started ringing the bell repeatedly. Before I could stop her, someone who appeared to be the butler came out and happily let us inside without questioning anything. That's odd. I sipped on my iced tea and peered around at the grandness of the place, absorbing the rich energy, when suddenly, a very dashing guy walked over. There he is! That's Daddy! Huh? This was so confusing, and seeing her hug a stranger was super embarrassing. I had a talk with the guy to figure out what happened, and apparently he's called Harry, and he's 22 like me. Huh? That's crazy, as he looks and acts way older. As for the dad story, it turns out as Bertie was waiting for the school bus, she saw a woman drop her purse. So she rushed over and picked it up and was about to return it, but the woman turned around, saw Bertie holding it, and accused her of being a thief. Just in time, Harry appeared and claimed to be her father to settle the matter. Then he took her to the mansion and showed her around. So that's what happened. Oh, my sister. Bertie has told me everything. She's such a precious child. I'd happily adopt her. No way! Why not? You like being here, don't you, Birdie? Zoe, I really like it here. I can play with Oreo as much as I want. And now, I have a daddy just like Clara and Polly do. But I can't just leave her alone. Of course not. You can stay with Birdie. <laughs> what? How come such a good person suddenly fell from the sky? Skeptical, I told Harry I needed more time to think. He smiled and handed me his business card and told me to call him any time. What is this? Harry Atkins, the eldest son of the chairman of ATLAC Corp? Unbelievable! His name was all over the internet as a rich and educated young man. If that was the case, then surely this had to be legit, right? <sighs> I can't afford to pay these. My sister and I deserve better than this life. Besides, it would be nice to have a place to stay for free, right? So the next day, I went to see Harry and offered to help with the housework as payment. Harry agreed and presented a prepared contract. Contract? Okay. 
but there was a clause in it that required me not to mention that I was Bertie's sister. Hmm, this was a little odd, but never mind, it didn't matter. Here was to our new luxurious life. Wait, but does that mean I also have to call him dad? <laughs> so, yeah, my new life began. And oh boy, it was crazy. A maid brought me breakfast in bed and did all my laundry. So much for helping out with household chores. There are actually more servants in this house than the number of staff in my office. So it's obvious that there's nothing left for me to do. Even so, I wanted to be useful, because hearing them calling me Miss made me feel quite embarrassed. However, oops, turns out I suck at house chores. Once I put Harry's fine suit in the washing machine and ended up ruining it, which made him pace up and down the room in anger. Also, he couldn't seem to say anything nice about me, always complaining about the flowers I bought or saying the muffins I spent hours baking were too chewy. He threw away all of my handmade stuff because he thought it was garbage. What a rude man! Oh, wait, he's not even a man. He's just a stubborn kid who doesn't care about other people's feelings. I tell ya, if it weren't for Bertie and that contract, I'd... Poof! But those are just small gripes. In general, our life here was great. Bertie is very happy, and seeing her living her best life makes me smile. But unbeknown to me, turns out this was the calm before the hurricane. Hurricane Rachel! Harry's betrothed fiancé since childhood, she's from a rich family and is therefore deemed a suitable marriage alliance to Harry's family. I overheard the servants in the house saying that Harry is the successor to the company. So when he marries Rachel, the company will be even more flourishing. As soon as she saw me, Rachel kept asking Harry, Hey, who is this? Why is she here? And this girl too. Why is there a kid in the house? Who is this scary lady? Hearing that, Rachel looked at me from head to toe and then started firing questions at me. Why are you here? How do you know Harry? When are you leaving? Enough! What a relief. Harry intervened just in time, then dragged her into the reading room. Rachel followed Harry, but didn't forget to wrap her arms around his neck as she peered at me with a smug look on her face. Huh? What does she mean by that? Ugh, is she... jealous? If that's the case, then she's wasting her time. Because it is true that I have a crush on someone, but it's not Harry. You see, the other week I was wandering home from the grocery store when I met the love of my life. My shopping bag split, and my soda, cookies, and potato chips tumbled out. I was trying to pick everything up without getting run over, when suddenly a guy appeared and helped me. Then he drove me home. His name's Marcus, and he's so hot. After that, we exchanged numbers, and have been texting ever since. Marcus is so easy to talk to, so I confided in him about everything, from Birdie being adopted to the fact that I'm now working as a housekeeper. He's so sweet and kind, and I feel like I can tell him anything. He's the prince of my dreams. Anyway, my strange life in the mansion continued. One thing's for sure, Harry was great with Bertie. For her birthday, he surprised her with a trip to the amusement park. I have to admit, we had a lot of fun together. Bertie made us go on the carousel five times. Then we got ice cream. Suddenly, I noticed Harry giving me this odd look. What? You have some ice cream on your lips. Here. He leaned forward and gently dabbed it away with a napkin. Just then, a crowd rushed in and Harry reached out and pulled me and Bertie closer to him. Our eyes met, and... Huh? Why did I have goosebumps and a pounding heart? What did that mean? Did he do that intentionally or not? Why did I have this strange feeling? While I was still sinking deep in my thoughts, Harry stopped the car and said he needed to pass by his brother's place for some files. Huh? Isn't that... Marcus? Marcus? I blurted out. You two know each other? I didn't answer. Instead, I turned my attention to Bertie. When we got home, I kept wondering why Marcus never told me who he was. I texted him to ask, and he replied that they don't get along, so he didn't want me to know. Hmm. Despite all that, I stayed up all night thinking about Marcus. And, and, um, also Harry. 
It's safe to say I was confused about everything. Then, Marcus and Rachel suddenly showed up at Harry's house one day with a load of groceries. Rachel announced that she was baking a cake, as it's soon going to be her birthday, and we should all assist. Okay, weird, but whatever. I was preparing the mixture when Marcus took my stirring hand and insisted on helping me. Suddenly, Harry burst in between us. Upon seeing this, Rachel yanked on his arm and pulled him away. My eyes widened in horror as I saw the mixture fly into the air and slow-mo splatter all over us. We stood there covered in cake mixture as we all exchanged dirty looks. Um, okay, so after that little display, I think it's clear to say that Harry has feelings for me. Later on, when Marcus and Rachel had left and I was freshly showered, Harry knocked on my door and smiling at me said, Zoe, there's a family dinner tomorrow where you'll get to meet my parents. Don't worry, you won't have to say anything. As a way of saying thanks, I'll pay off your college debts. Okay, so that was weird, but at this point, I'd learned not to question it anymore. Besides, it would be so nice to be debt-free, and it was just dinner, right? I want to break off the engagement with Rachel. This is my girlfriend, and we already have a kid together. Wh- what I almost blurted out, but Harry squeezed my hand to stop me from saying anything, so I sat there with a dumbfounded look on my face. Right at that moment, Marcus and Rachel burst in. Stop the act! Mom, Dad, this isn't his girlfriend, and that little girl is actually her sister. She's just some poor maid. Yes, that's right. I've known all along. I'm the one who told Marcus to pretend to like you to get proof. What is all this? Mom, Dad, I don't think a liar like him should be the heir of your company. I hope you rethink your decision. I didn't understand. What's going on here? Girlfriend? My child who? The heir of what? I just knew one thing only. That I was fooled by both my crush and Harry. I felt like such an idiot. So I quickly grabbed Bertie, packed up all my stuff, then ran out of that mansion immediately. Poor innocent Bertie seemed so confused. She kept asking where her daddy was and why she couldn't stay with him. I took what was left of our savings to rent a small apartment for both of us. Life went back to normal. Final demand letters and all. This was our reality. I knew that now. The last two months were like a dream. It was time to wake up. But still, I felt a pang of sadness whenever I thought about how Harry had fooled me. I was snooping around online and saw an article about how Marcus had taken over the company, only to end up bankrupt due to his poor decision-making. As for Harry, well, he'd founded his own startup, and it seemed to be doing pretty well. But then, one sunny day, I was on my way to pick up Bertie from school when a familiar person walked alongside me. Hey, it's a nice day, isn't it? Harry? What do you want? Look, I admit that at first, I was just using you to get out of my engagement with Rachel. But then, I... I... I want you and Bertie in my life. I love you, Zoe. Please come home with me. Hmm. I wonder what's taking Valerie so long. She's been in that changing room for ages. Valerie? Is everything okay in there? Don't force it if it doesn't fit. No, this is the last dress in store. I just need to breathe in for a bit longer. So? It's beautiful, isn't it? Valerie spun around. Then suddenly... Yep. Trying to squeeze into a dress two sizes too small for her, then it split. <sighs> the giggles around us started. Valerie blushed, hurriedly paid for the dress, and pulled me out of the shop. Why am I so fat? Ugh! I just want to feel pretty on my date. If I was skinny like you, I wouldn't have this problem. Poof! You know, it's not as easy as you think being thin. Yep, you heard me right. Being thin has its downsides. First of all, fashion. My nightmare. 
I have to wear an extra small size, and the clothes still hang off me. Actually, most of my clothes are from kids' stores, so I feel so untrendy. Then in winter, I have to wear tons of layers just so I don't freeze to death. And in the summer, <sighs> I can't wear cute clothes as I look like a coat hanger. Not only that, because I'm so skinny, people often ask me to do nonsense stuff. Once, I was studying in my room when suddenly I heard my sister Camilla calling me. She'd forgotten her keys and forced me to climb through her tiny window gap to get them. Seriously, I can't even! Then, on another occasion, Valerie made me crawl into the classroom locker to help her cheat on her Spanish test. Unfortunately, the teacher walked in while this was happening and gave me a week's worth of detentions, of course. Ugh! Oh my god, No Way Home is so good. I literally can't think of one bad thing to say about it. Yep, the part near the end? Ah! Yep, guess what? I'd managed to trap my foot in a manhole. Man, what rotten luck. I tried pulling my leg free, but it was no use. It wouldn't budge. There I was, freaking out that I'd be stuck here forever, and all my friends could do was huddle together and ask me questions like, Madeline, how on earth did you get your foot in such a small slot? Wow, that's unbelievable. Even Jaden, my bookworm friend, took out a ruler from his backpack and started measuring how wide the slot was. Grrr. My dear friends, I'm being stuck down here. Stop gopping and help me! Finally, they tried helping me out, but in the end, we had to call the rescue squad. By this point, a massive crowd had gathered around me, and strangers were filming me. When I was finally free, everyone looked at me and held back their laughter. Even Parker, my crush, was smiling. Jeez, this was beyond embarrassing. But... A hot guy like Parker would never notice a moving skeleton like me anyway. <sighs> Don't think like that, Maddie. You're so pretty. Show me some confidence, would you? Valerie said as she nudged my arm. I put the book down and glared at her, and suddenly noticed Parker walking towards our table, smiling. And, yep, he said he wanted to sit with us. Even though I was cheering inside of my head, I still had to act composed. And oh my god, can you believe he even said I was cute? After that day, Valerie kept on encouraging me, saying he had definitely given me a green light. So finally, I gathered my courage to write down all my feelings for Parker on a note and clipped it to his notebook. At the end of class that day, he came to my desk and took my hand. Yay! Everything was fine. Great even. Until one day, when the two of us were taking a romantic walk past the Swan Lake, Parker suddenly turned to me and said, You're so beautiful, Maddie. And if you just put on a few more pounds, I swear you'll be the hottest girl at school. Yes, I know. But it's hard for me to gain weight. No big deal. Just leave it to me. I'll fatten you up. I thought Parker was just joking, but it turns out he was being deadly serious. Since that day, every time we went on a date, instead of taking me to the bowling alley and movies as usual, Parker would take me out to eat. I swear, I've tried all the restaurants in our town. More surprisingly, on my birthday, Parker even gave me a bouquet of fried chicken. How romantic! But this didn't change anything, as my weight still stayed the same. Parker was disappointed when he peered over me and saw the scales hadn't budged. Then he sighed out. How come you and Valerie are friends, but look totally opposite? Here comes our adorable chubby Valerie. What? Parker called Valerie adorable again. This wasn't the first time either. Annoyed, I put down my fork and walked away from them. After that, I started avoiding Valerie. I did homework with other friends, sat with other girls at lunch, and every time I happened to see Valerie, I turned around and walked away. Honestly, 
I didn't want it to be this way, but just seeing her made me uncomfortable. But I couldn't bear to see my boyfriend call my BFF cute. Well, he thought I was too skinny. <sighs> then summer break finally rolled around. I thought it'd be just me and Parker, but then he went off to a summer camp in Spain. <sighs> the plan was all ruined. So I spent a whole sunny day inside sulking. What's wrong? Are you bored because your lover is away? So why don't you take this time to surprise him when he returns? Surprise? A great idea popped into my head. But, but how do I get chubby? Easy peasy. Okay, if it's that easy, then show me. Okay, if you do my summer homework for me. What? She's such an opportunist. But I really wanted to pile on the pounds and please Parker. So, without hesitation, I nodded in agreement. So, from that day on, I started following Camilla's weight gain plan. I switched veggies for greasy foods, and my main meal was always late at night. I also changed water for milkshakes, but I did have to stop drinking them when the smell of milk alone made me feel sick. Seeing me eating crazy like that, my parents worriedly said, Madeline, eating healthily is important, else your health will be affected. But I ignored their advice. This time, I definitely had to gain weight. Finally, after a month of trying, I gained some weight. Yay! I looked a lot more attractive now, didn't I? I was studying myself in the mirror when I heard my phone beep. It was Parker. He was coming over tomorrow with a present for me. The next day, I put on this hot dress that I'd never felt confident enough to wear before, and I asked Camilla to help me do my makeup. As soon as I finished, I eagerly waited for Parker in the living room. The doorbell rang. I excitedly opened the door. But as soon as he saw me, Parker quickly said, Oh, sorry. I have the wrong house. Then he started to leave. Huh? He didn't recognize me? This will be fun. No, honey, you're not mistaken. It's me. Your destiny. Madeline? Is that really you? Oh my, how on earth can you be this big? We've only been apart for a month. So, you don't think I'm prettier now? To my surprise, Parker shook his head. No, no, you're so fat now. It doesn't look okay. Lose some weight. Huh? This was so confusing. I thought he wanted me to be bigger. As annoying as this was, I still listened to Parker and tried to lose the weight I'd put on. <sighs> so, it turns out that losing weight is far trickier than it sounds. Actually, it's a million times harder to lose it than it is to gain it. After a month of healthy eating and exercise, I gained another pound. Ugh! Stop eating that. Are you giving up already? You must try harder. What? It's just some popcorn. Why does he have to be so rude about this? I'll give you two weeks to lose weight. Else we're done. Huh? What did he just say? Done? He was the one who wanted me to gain weight in the first place. Now he was threatening to break up with me if I didn't lose it. How ridiculous. You know what? I don't need two weeks. Let's end it right now. It's clear you never loved me at all. You only like my appearance. If you truly cared about me, you wouldn't care what size I was. Then I walked off. Ugh, how could I have been so stupid? For the entirety of my relationship with that jerk Parker, I was blindly following him. I only cared about pleasing him, and it cost me so many things, including my best friend. I needed to apologize to her right away. I nervously knocked on the door, then waited. Finally, Valerie opened it. But on seeing me, she went to shut it. I'm so sorry. Just let me explain, please. Valerie, I'm so sorry. It was all because I was afraid Parker would leave me for you. But I realize now that 
and he's a massive jerk, and I was an idiot for ever trying to change for him. Jeez, you're crazy. Parker is totally not my type. I scratched my head and told her about how terrible Parker had treated me and how I'd foolishly listened to him. Man, that douchebag! Then she hugged me. Valerie confessed to me that she'd been trying to lose weight by lowering her calorie intake, but the pounds were coming off. And worse still, she felt weak and tired all the time. I nodded in agreement with her. So, from then on, Valerie and I made a promise to love ourselves, regardless of what size we were, and to never let anyone try and change us. And look, that's Walker and Joel, our awesome boyfriends who love us just the way we are. And you know what? It feels so good not caring what other people think. So don't ever let idiots put you down. Because when you allow yourself to just be you, then you can finally realize just how beautiful you truly are. This was my first day at my new school, and so far it was going pretty well. Can you believe the principal himself was giving me the guided tour, as well as showering me with praise? Amber. With your impressive grades and outstanding academic achievements, you'll fit in nicely here. This is Leo, my son. He's another excellent student here, and he's going to show you around. Leo looked at me from head to toe, then smiled and winked at me. Huh? Was he checking me out? And here's the library. Maybe we could study here together sometime. Um, sorry, but I prefer to study alone. Right at that moment, a guy walked past us to the librarian's desk. Oh. My. God. He totally had this whole cool bad boy look going on. I zoomed in to see what book he was holding. The Orion Mystery? Wow. Nice taste. I've been really into ancient stuff these days, too. Leo must have noticed me staring at that guy as he snidely said, I'd steer clear of the likes of him if I was you. His grades are pathetic, and he's probably only in here so he can take a nap. He's below your league, while I'm far more suitable. Thanks for showing me around, but seeing your smug and scornful attitude towards others proves otherwise. Then I left, leaving a stunned-looking Leo behind. I found my class easily enough, even without Leo's help. And my desk, yeah, there was no missing that. I mean, the huge bouquet with my name on it and a welcome hamper full of candy was a dead giveaway. And apparently, it was from the principal. Whoa. I knew he was glad I was here, but wasn't this a bit too much? Anyway, I shared all the flowers and candies with my classmates to get to know them better. So far, so good. And these two sweet girls, Jane and Ellie, walked to the canteen with me and showed me how to get the lunch tray using my student QR code. But then they pointed over to a group of students sitting next to the window and told me to go sit with them. Huh? Why can't I sit with you? You're not one of us. Then they went and joined another group. What did they mean by that? I looked around and noticed there were two menus, a delicious-looking one on the red board and a bland one on a blue board. Hmm. It seemed the boards correlated to the trays as more kids than not had the blue trays with the dull foods. I took my red tray full of tasty food and walked over to the window, where all the kids were sitting with red trays, including Leo. Hmm, there's something really strange about this school. I was pretty awkward and didn't know what to do when I saw the Orion mystery boy walking in with a blue tray. So, without thinking, I approached him. I saw you this morning in the library. You were checking out my favorite book. So, should I return the book or what? No, no, I just want to make friends. Stop hanging out with this loser. A straight-A student like you should sit with us. We're different, see? This was so stupid, so I told Leo I didn't need colored trays to tell me who I could and couldn't talk to, and that I was fully capable of making my own mind up. Leo and his friends looked furious, while the Orion mystery boy just grinned. Suddenly, a girl in the group spoke up with a super cold tone. Don't worry, Leo. This new girl will soon figure out what losers they are. Then she signaled for the whole group to leave. 
After that, the Orion Mystery Boy and I started talking, and he finally told me his name. It's John. Hmm. The blue tray kids were really nice. Way nicer than the red tray ones. I asked John what the deal with the trays was, and he said that this school divided its students into two groups. The red were top achievers, and therefore got better food, cleaner spaces at the canteen, just everything. While the blues were made to eat bland food and squashed into the corner of the canteen. Poof, this whole thing was dumb. So I continued hanging out with John and his friends. Only Leo and that girl he was with, Quinn, didn't approve. Turns out she's the best student around here, and that made her the leader of the Reds. On many occasions, Quinn and her minions had pulled me aside after class to tell me I should stay away from the Blues. But I didn't care. Then one day, the school announced that it was looking for the next school president. I wasn't that interested in it, but my friends were eager for me to sign up. If you're president, then you could make things fairer around here. Right. Better food, better tables and chairs. Please, we need you. Well, they did have a point. I really wanted them to have better things. And I suppose being school president would look good on my profile. So I signed up. But wow, I didn't think I'd be this popular. My friends completely supported me, made colorful banners and helped me come up with catchy slogans. And you know what? In the end, I got to the final round. Whoop! Now all I had to do was beat Quinn. But then, something awful happened at the school. I arrived to find a bunch of students gathered around something. I squeezed through the crowd and... Oh my god. The principal's beloved portrait was covered in red paint. Then across the loudspeakers, two names were called to the principal's office. John's and... Mine! Do you two know why I've summoned you here? John and I shared confused looks. No, huh? My portrait has been vandalized, and I know that Amber, you were the last one who passed the security guard yesterday. And John, you were caught on CCTV climbing over the back gate. Can you both please explain what you were doing so late at school? I couldn't find my math book, and I have an important math test coming up. So I came back to try and find it. And what about you, John? I knew it. An exemplary student such as Amber would never do such a thing. But a troublemaker like you, on the other hand, you're expelled. I didn't do it. Please reconsider, sir. Please give me some time so I can find the one who's responsible. Very well. Seeing as it's you, Amber, I shall allow you one week to prove this boy's innocence. Him or his guilt. When we left the office, I asked John why he was sneaking about the school late at night, but he got all defensive. I had a thing, and it's none of your business. If you want to believe it was me, then do. Didn't you see what I just did? I defended you. Can't you just tell me? I had a thing, okay? My thing that you don't need to know. Then he left. I stood there feeling confused when Quinn, Leo, and their group walked towards me. Don't waste your time with him. Sooner or later, he's going to be expelled. Right, Quinn? But Quinn ignored him, then gave me a dagger look. I'm going to say this one last time. Stay away from him. Then they all left. Hmm. Why was Leo so sure that John would be expelled? I know they all hated John, especially Quinn. Could it be that they framed him? Well, there's only one way to find out. I needed to keep a close eye on Quinn and see what she was up to. So after school, I followed Quinn all the way to the harbor. Hmm, it's like she was waiting for someone. Um, what on earth are you doing? My god, I had to press my hands over my mouth so I didn't start screaming. Turns out he noticed that I was following Quinn, so he followed me too in case I do something stupid. Suddenly, Quinn took her phone out to call someone. But then a strange thing happened. John's phone started vibrating. Um, why is Quinn calling you? John took his phone out and showed me the screen. It's just my mom. And when I turned around to see what Quinn was doing, she'd gone. Ugh, I lost her. 
I've been following Quinn for a whole week, but it's led to nothing. <sighs> I was so deep in my thoughts that I accidentally dropped someone's backpack and all their stuff fell out. Ugh, it's Quinn's. Better pick everything up before she comes back. But then I saw something that caught my attention. It was a receipt for... Red paint. Jackpot. I knew it was her. John was skipping classes today, so I took a detour to his house after school to tell him. Huh? Why was Quinn standing outside his door? There was something seriously fishy going on here, so I followed them. They stopped at an abandoned house nearby, and I eavesdropped on their conversation. I think Amber knows something. Last time, we were lucky she didn't catch us dating at the harbor. But this time, what if she finds out? I've been working so hard for this school president campaign. I knew she'd go back for her math book. It would have been fine if the school didn't have that new camera at the back gate. Tomorrow, I will confess to the principal that I did it. You didn't do it yourself anyway. Oh, God. I couldn't believe it. Turns out, Quinn was meeting John at the harbor, so when she called someone, it was actually him. But being an expert at this secret dating game, he had her number saved as mom. They were hiding their relationship this whole time. And worse, they tried framing me so Quinn would win the election. Unbelievable! I couldn't stay quiet any longer, so I stepped out in front of them, told them I'd heard everything and that I was going to tell the principal. Then I ran off without letting them say a word. The next day, I was en route to the principal's office when I passed Quinn tearing down her election posters on the wall. Why are you doing that? It's okay. I know I don't deserve to be school president. Hmm. I thought you wanted to be president more than anything in the world. Why else would you play dirty tricks on me? So, Quinn explained to me that she was running for school president to eliminate the discrimination here, so that she didn't have to hide her relationship with John any longer. Oh, wow. I didn't know. I didn't expect her to have such a meaningful motive behind all this. My plan was just to fight for better things for the Blues team. But man, Quinn had a vision to change this whole school. Impressive. And there's one more thing. Since you're the principal's favorite student, we were afraid that if you become school president, despite your best efforts, things here would only get worse. So there was no other way for us. We had to. I'm sorry. It seems like I misjudged Quinn. And I didn't want John to get expelled, so I said that I'd take the blame for the portrait incident. But it's all my fault. You don't need to do that. No worries. I'm sure to ace the math test and win a prize for the school, so there's no way he's going to punish me. So at recess, I was heading to the principal's office, but before I could get there, I found myself being dragged into the janitor's closet. Oh, it was John. He was feeling guilty and didn't want me to take the fall. I was about to reply to him when I heard two familiar voices in the science room next to us. It was Quinn and Leo. Oh my god. We could hear them clearly through the ventilation hole. <laughs> I can't believe it worked. Amber is such a fool. There's no way she'll be allowed to run for president and victory will be mine. So are you really going to remove the division between the two groups just to freely date your stupid boyfriend in public? <laughs> are you fooled by that too? Of course I won't. No way. That was only to trick Amber and John. What I'm going to do is make sure all troublemakers are going to be kicked out of school. What? I got played? Again? Ugh! I turned to John and, oh man, he looked disappointed. Don't worry. I know a way to get back at them. On election day, Quinn gave her speech. And unsurprisingly, she went on about how the Red Group brings more to the school and therefore deserves their privileges. She really believes she could make a fool out of this Amber, huh? When I stepped out on the stage, her jaw dropped. Yeah, Quinn, I didn't confess to the principal. Giving speeches in front of a crowd wasn't something new to me, so I was super confident. I'm sure you're all aware of how this school operates. We're divided into two groups and get treated very differently. What I see here is discrimination and prejudice. 
when in reality, this should be a safe place for all students to strive and reach their full potential. So I'm standing here today to tell you that if you choose me to be your next school president, I will break the barrier. Let's say goodbye to red and blue trays and hello to fairness and equality. After my speech ended, the crowd went wild. Wow. And surprisingly, some of the red group were cheering me too. Hmm. You're probably wondering why I didn't expose Quinn in front of the whole school, right? As I see it, she'd had a massive reality check, so I think that was enough. I also spotted the principal quietly sneaking off with his head down, in the midst of cheers the whole school gave me. Could you guess who won? Yeah, me of course. (laughs) John came on stage and handed me flowers in front of a furious-looking Quinn. I walked towards her and whispered, Let's see how you're going to get rid of the troublemakers now. She just sneered at me, then stormed off the stage. Later, we heard that Quinn confessed all to the principal. Then she transferred to another school. What about me? Well, after I became school president, I stuck to my promise and began making some serious changes to the unfairness of the school. And John, did we become a couple, you ask? Oh no, we're just close friends. (laughs) Hi, Mia here. Not to brag, but since childhood, I've always been kinda a genius. I've already stacked up over 20 science-based awards, and by adding this one more trophy into my collection, I even got to skip a grade. Your achievements at such a young age are admirable. What's your plan next? Well, I've decided to drop out of school. Yep, that's my plan. With as impressive of a profile, I'm just one research paper away from being accepted onto the Space Up Astronomical Research Program. Why waste time on boring classes, right? But ugh, mom and dad didn't like the idea of me not graduating. So after a lot of compromises, I did get to move to Quebec with my grandparents for a year. But I still had to go to school there. And voila, here I am in Canada, ready to conquer my dream. But why was there this angry crowd in front of my new home? They were screaming, cursing, vandalizing. My grandparents secretly signaled me inside the back way, then glumly told me how the crowd were parents of the children who got food poisoning after attending Riverside School summer camp. The problem was, the food was provided by my grandparents' farm, and now the school is threatening to file a lawsuit and doesn't seem to be open for negotiation. That can't be. There must be a solution for this. So gathering up my courage, I knocked on the principal's door. Do I know you? Um, I don't think so, ma'am. I'm Mia Jones, granddaughter of Mr. Peterson, the rancher. Wait, Mia Jones from New York? Hmm, come in. The woman must have been Mrs. Robinson, the principal's wife. But does she know me? As soon as we sat down, she said, I will withdraw the charges for you. Oh, ma'am, really? I knew we could sort this out amicably. Oh, but my sweet child, I don't do charity. I know what you're capable of, so I will only drop the lawsuit if you make my daughter the top student at school. In other words, you'll exchange all test results with her. What do you think? What do I think? I think that's a crazy proposition. But if I didn't do this, then the form would go under. So, with a reluctant nod, I agreed. Then I was immediately taken to meet her daughter. I was expecting someone snooty and spoiled, but to my surprise, this super smiley girl greeted me. Hey, I'm Eliana, but just call me Elle. I'm so sorry about my mom. She's got it into her head that I need to excel at school, since my dad is the principal. Elle hesitated for a bit, then continued. Also, there's Nora, the super smart daughter of my dad's ex. Mom doesn't want me to suck and dad to favor this other girl over me, so... Thinking about it, my main purpose for coming here was to complete my astronomical research. I don't need any more A, so I smiled at Elle. Don't worry, I'll make sure you're the star student in no time. The next morning, I went to school with Elle, and wow, it looked so ancient and calm. Definitely distinctive from my stuffy school in New York. Elle introduced me to her friends, and they all seemed really welcoming. It's gonna be great here. Still holding the deal, I helped Elle answer the teacher's questions, exchanged assignments and homework with her, and soon, Elle had already climbed up to the top rank. On the contrary, I was at the bottom of the class. Oh wow, Elle's mom really wasn't kidding when she said her grades were bad. But that didn't matter to me anyway, because the only thing I care about is this amazing astronomy tower. Talk about heaven!
What are you doing here? I turned around to see Nora, the girl Elle had mentioned before, who is also the Astronomy Club's president. Hi, I'm Mia. I want to be part of your team. I have experience in studying astronomy and... Stop blabbering. Your grades suck, and we have a strict no idiots allowed policy. I told Nora to at least give me a chance to prove myself, so she sat me down and sniggered as she handed me an astronomy test. Easy peasy, I got all the answers right in just 10 minutes. But instead of welcoming me into the club, she accused me of cheating. Ugh! Nora didn't just dislike me, she also seemed to despise L2. Any chance she got to call us out on something, she would definitely take it. Sir, they're cheating! I... I just want to help Mia. Please, I'm so sorry. Huh? Who was helping who? Mia, you've got a lot of nerve. Your test is suspended. The whole class was giving me disapproving looks. Being this disrespected by my peers was a new experience for me. How could Elle tell life so calmly? Great, now that I was labeled a cheater, I would never get accepted into the astronomy club ever. Mia the cheater just had to find her way to get in there then. So, I waited until dark then sneaked into the janitor's room to steal the key to the observation tower. <sighs> now I could freely study my favorite constellation without any interruptions. Montreal is close to the North Pole, so the night sky here is so clear that I could see all the stars. At this rate, my research could be done faster than expected. Then I would be out of here, leaving all of these childish rivalry dramas behind. One night, I was busy taking notes when someone opened the door and walked in. Who's there? Oh no! I hastily grabbed my papers and escaped through the emergency exit door. Who is the guy? Why is he here at this hour? The next morning, I pushed my way through the noisy crowd and saw the announcement on the school spin board. The astronomy club warned outsiders not to use the observatory room and that there would be severe punishment once the recent trespasser was discovered. Shoot, the guy from last night must have snitched on me. Turned out, the snitch was Brandon, the new transfer student, and also the grandson of the founder of Space Up. It's a shame the incredible Sir Edward Foster's grandson was such a smug jerk. But that didn't stop all the girls from going cuckoo crazy for this Brandon guy. The ironic thing is, he kept on coming over to me and talking about astronomy. Huh? Doesn't everyone here see me as an insignificant kid? Is this yours? Brandon said while holding out a piece of paper. Oh. My. This was part of my astronomy research. Did I drop it in the tower that night? But how did Brandon know it was mine? Flustered, I quickly made an excuse and left. I couldn't stop worrying about Brandon finding out I was the one who used the observatory room. If anyone knows about it, it'd be an instant suspension. I was busy thinking when suddenly the whole class burst into applause. As it turned out, they were praising my excellent essay on constellations. Well, it's known as Elle's essay now. Then the teacher turned to read the class's worst essay. My favorite star is Justin Bieber. Every time I see him, I think if only he was my husband. Everyone started laughing. <sighs> no prize for guessing whose name was on this one. Mia, I suggest you learn something from your friend Elle. I turned to look at Elle and saw her smug face. She even joined in with the others to make fun of me. Was she really that stupid to write that essay? Or did she intend to embarrass me? When I got home, Elle was already waiting on the porch to apologize to me. I helped you as promised. Shouldn't your mom keep her promise too? Get the lawsuit dismissed now. Then I'll help you finish your final exam successfully. Else, I'm not doing it. She's on it, Mia. Don't worry. I know you're leaving after a year anyway, and I also know that you're the one who snuck into the observatory. So, if you want to leave peacefully, at least help me and Brandon to get together. You and Brandon? But what does it have to do with me? Elle then told me that Brandon was so impressed by her astronomy essay that he asked her out to discuss it further. But of course, she knew nothing about it, so she had a plan. I'll have my AirPod on, and you gotta stay on the line with me throughout the date so you could tell me the answers to his questions. If we become official, I'll buy you that telescope you bang on about so much. You know, that thingy-majiggy. Celestron! Celestron Telescope! Oh man, she really knew my weak spot. Alright then, we have a deal. That weekend, Elle and Brandon went for a walk in Jerry Park while I stayed at home eavesdropping on their conversation through the phone. I see you have a passion for the Astros. So why didn't you join the astronomy club? Just cause I'm busy with my studies, and I also have piano practice, you know. Really? 
Oh, in the paper, you mentioned the black hole Sagittarius A. You seem to have done a lot of research about it. Could you tell me more? Although Elle seemed frantic having me put words in her mouth, everything went pretty smoothly. Only one thing. The more Brandon and I talked, the more I realized we had so much in common. Even if it was through Elle, I still felt a connection with him. I thought everything was going well between them, but no. One day, Elle came to me in a fit of anger and said Brandon had turned down her love confession. I want you to go talk to him and figure out why. I need to know the reason. What? Why don't you just ask him? Because I'm me, Eliana Robinson. I don't ask such embarrassing questions. So I was the one who had to make the embarrassing move? Also, call me. I want to hear it myself. Gosh, this bossy girl. And so I had to drag Brandon to the quiet rooftop while my phone was secretly on a call with Elle so she could follow the conversation. Okay, let's get straight to the point. Why did you reject Elle? Um, because I like someone else? If you already like someone else, then why hang out with her? Because only when I go out with Elle, I can talk to the person I like. It's disappointing though, why don't you recognize me? I quickly ended the call hoping Elle didn't understand what was going on. He already knew I was behind Elle's words all this time? It turned out Brandon had met me once in the city's ranking contest for students in 6th grade, in which I surpassed him and won the first prize. He'd never met a kid smarter than him in astronomy before, so when he saw me again at school, he instantly recognized me. Only, he couldn't understand why my score was so low. Brandon wanted to talk to me, but he said that all he received was a cold shoulder. I felt a bit guilty, but it's all because he told the school administration I snuck into the astronomy room. But it turned out Nora was the one who reported me. Nora was there at the time too. By the way, why do you have to do Elle's homework? I told Brandon about my contract with Mrs. Robinson and apologized for not thinking about his feelings when I agreed to be behind his and Elle's date. I see. Follow me. There's something you should know. Brandon took me to see Nora. She didn't welcome me at first, but when Brandon told her about my secret, Nora immediately changed her attitude. I should've known. Someone like Elle couldn't make such progress. She and her mom are deceiving everyone again. Then, Nora told me how she was secretly investigating the food poisoning case because, on the day of summer camp, she saw Mrs. Robinson and Elle doing something shady in the school kitchen. Why should I trust you? Elle told me that you have it in for her. So maybe you're just trying to ruin her life. <sighs> Please, why do I have to do that? Believe it or not, your precious best friend is trying to embarrass you in front of the whole school. What is this? In the lecture hall, Elle was sitting in front of a screen which said, Mia's grandpa poisoned us? We rushed to the lecture hall to find her there, telling people that my grandparents were the ones that catered spoiled food. And that I had no shame copying her works, cheating many times, and even stealing Brandon from her while they were dating. So she must have figured out that Brandon liked me, huh? Even so, why didn't she talk to me directly? How dare she make things up about me and my family? Before I could do anything, Brandon changed what was on the screen to a video of me winning the Young Minds Intelligence Contest. Everybody started buzzing when they recognized who I was. Someone even spoke loudly. I watched that show! Is that really Mia? Elle's face turned pale as people started doubting her. Then Nora snatched the mic from Elle's hand and said, So, now we've made it clear that Mia isn't dumb at all. Then what about the poisoning at the camp? Did anyone find it strange how only Elle and her mother showed no sign of poisoned symptoms that day? That's because they were the ones who poisoned the food and blamed it on Mia's grandparents. The screen continued to show a clip of Elle's mom looking shady as she spoke to some man. She did all that just to ruin Mia's grandparents' good reputation. Then she would hire this man to buy the farm on her behalf for a ridiculously low price. What did you say? Oh my god, the principal has been standing at the door and witnessed everything. Everyone, out! When there were only four of us left in the room, Elle furiously shouted, How dare you! You're just the outcome of your cheater mom, remember? Don't play dumb with me. You're well aware that my mom didn't cheat on Mr. Robinson, and that your mom is the one who lied to him to ruin his and my mom's wedding. And then what? Lying again that you're his daughter to force him to stay with her? You and your mom are awful people. Mr. Robinson stood in between them and stopped the argument. Oh, he didn't look too well either. Turns out, he already knew Nora's mom was wrongfully framed, and didn't cheat on him at all. And that's why he always tried to make it up to Nora. 
but learning that Elle wasn't his daughter was one big bombshell. After knowing what his wife and daughter did, he decided to resign. He made amends with Nora's mom and they're giving it another go. After the truth came out, Elle and her mom left without a trace. I say, good riddance to bad news. My grandparents were cleared of the food poisoning allegations and now their business is booming again. With Brandon and Nora's help, I collected enough data and finished my assignment with flying colors. Now to quit high school and pursue my dreams. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just going on a short trip to Mont Megantic National Park to see the northern lights with Brandon and Nora. I've decided to stay and finish high school here so I can continue pursuing my passion for astronomy with my two... Hey guys, I'm Feather, and I look just like any other 16-year-old, right? Actually, my life as a teenager is far from ordinary since I have hemophilia, a rare disease in which my blood doesn't clot properly, so even a simple graze could be fatal. My parents are so worried that I might hurt myself that they keep me safely shut away in this mansion. In fact, I've never left it. Money isn't a problem to them as they own this massive energy corporation, so to compensate for me not being able to go outside, they make sure I get anything I ask for. My giant playroom is cool, right? Not only that, but I also own a dressing room with hundreds of cute Lolita outfits and an enormous pantry full of my favorite snacks that I can enjoy at any time. You see, there's honestly nothing to complain about, except I suppose it does get a bit lonely sometimes. Until one morning, I was woken up by a screeching noise coming from downstairs. Are you kidding me? Do you want to burn my throat with this or what? What's going on here? I went over to the living room and was stunned to see a girl sitting way too comfortably on our couch. I was still trying to figure out who she was when she suddenly said, You, standing at the door, get me another glass of cool water. Now. Taken aback, I instinctively went to get her water. Then the girl finally looked up and seemed startled to see me. Oh my, I'm terribly sorry. I thought you were just one of the maids. Turns out she's Katie, the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Forger, the two scientists that are collaborating with our family's corporation. My parents arranged for them to stay here to facilitate the research on the upcoming project. When I told her about my life and condition, she seemed really surprised. Oh, Feather, it's as if you live in your own tiny world. There are already flying cars out there, and they've just invented time machines too. You're missing out on so much. Really? How come no one told me about this? <laughs> I'm just joking, silly. Whoa, you weren't kidding about not leaving this place, were you? Then she started telling me about some of her favorite things to do in the outside world, such as watching the latest movies in the cinema, going to the mall where she could actually try things on before buying them, or attending all the fun festivals. It all sounds so cool. We chatted for ages. Then I showed Katie around the mansion. Her reaction when seeing my dressing room and the playroom was seriously priceless. <laughs> From then on, I spent lots of time with Katie, but my favorite part about being around her were her stories about school, where she got to learn new things and make a lot of friends. Seeing my excited expression, Katie immediately suggested that I talk to my parents about maybe letting me experience it myself. Actually, it doesn't hurt to try, right? So at dinner, I gathered my courage to say, Mom, Dad, I want to go to school. I understand that you're worried for me, so Katie will come along to protect me. Right, Katie? Oh, yes, that's right. Feather is in good hands, Mr. and Mrs. Adams. My parents seemed very hesitant, but after a whole lot of persuading, they finally agreed with conditions. We'll join the most prestigious school in the state and have our own chauffeur. As for Katie, to avoid any incidents occurring, I suggest you get rid of the long nails and jewelry, Katie. We went back to my room after dinner, and I just couldn't hide my excitement. Yes, we'll get to go to school together soon. What should I prepare? What would you recommend? But then I noticed Katie staring in sorrow at her newly done set of nails. I'm so sorry, Katie. Is there anything I can do to make it up to you? It's okay, Feather. What matters is that you're able to go to school, and I'm so happy for you. It's bedtime anyways. I'll head back to my room now. I'm so lucky to have a friend like her. As I was indulging in my thoughts, a familiar voice startled me. Hey, I heard you two are going to school. Are you sure it's safe? Katie doesn't seem all that trustworthy. That is none of your business. You're just jealous that I've made a new friend while you're still lonely, aren't you? In case you're wondering, this guy is Liam, the butler's son. He was my childhood best friend and used to come to the mansion every day for homeschooling and to spend time with me. But we had some petty argument and I hadn't seen him since. Well, at least not until now. 
He was about to ramble about something else, but I slammed the door in his face. I wasn't going to let him ruin my mood. What I need to think about is my school day that's coming up. Oh my, it's so exciting. I really can't wait. Ah, we are going to Edgewood High today. So I decided to wear my favorite Lolita dress as Katie suggested. Oh, I almost forgot, Mr. Freddy. He's been my best friend since childhood, and of course he had to come along with me on this big day. Katie also said I should try introducing him to everyone. That would help me make new friends faster. Such a brilliant idea. Whoa, we're finally here. Hey, Katie, how do we find our lockers? Hey, Katie, when is lunch? Hey, Katie, do you know who's going to teach us? Oh my god, Feather, stop asking. Everyone's staring. Uh, I didn't even notice. It's probably because we're new. Hi, I'm Feather. Or maybe it's because of your extravagant outfit. Before I could say anything, someone spoke up. That's a lovely dress. Oh, you're right. They do seem to like my dress. <laughs> I waited for everyone in the room to settle, then confidently introduced myself. Hi, everyone. I'm Feather, and this is my best friend, Mr. Freddy. As soon as they saw Mr. Freddy, everyone burst out laughing. I didn't know what was so funny, so I just awkwardly laughed along. After class, I asked Katie why our classmates laughed earlier, and what she told me was unbelievable. They were making fun of me. It's so sad to know, but I guess not everyone can be as nice as Katie. She also told me to dress down next time to attract less unwanted attention. It's a bit upsetting, but I guess I'll have to do what's best. So I listened to Katie's advice and ditched the OTT dress. Just like she said, people actually stopped staring at me. Here, hold this. You look really good holding books. Huh? That sounds kind of weird. But it's fine, though. She probably wanted my help but was just too shy to ask. After the morning classes, I went to buy a bunch of lollipops, and that might look odd to Katie, so I let her know about how lollies are my special anxiety remedy. People here seem to be quite judgy, which got me a bit uneasy. You want one? Aw, poor you, but no thanks. By the way, I'll have lunch with David today. You know, the cute jock in our math class? So you're on your own this noon, okay? Then she quickly left without waiting for my response. I didn't know having lunch alone was so boring. Everyone has their own group, except for this one guy wearing a hoodie and a mask. H Hi, can I join you? But he didn't even reply, just stood up and moved to another seat. Did, did I do something wrong? Feeling the anxiety taking over, I immediately took a lollipop to calm myself down. And it's doing a wonderful job at making me feel better. But suddenly, someone snatched it out of my hand. I chased after him, but slipped on someone's foot and fell hard on the floor. Panicked, I burst out crying, and I heard the guy that took my candy say, Huh, huh, feather the toddler. Then everyone laughed at me again. Luckily, a guy spoke up. Stop this nonsense. What are you going to do if she's injured? Oh, wait, it's the weird guy from lunch. He checked on me to make sure everything was fine, then quietly went back to his seat. I didn't even have the chance to ask for his name before the teacher came in. This guy was so strange, but there was one thing I didn't understand. Why was Katie also laughing? Back home, Katie came to find me in the playroom, and I questioned her about the incident earlier, and she quickly apologized as she thought they were just joking. She then suggested going shopping and offered to buy me something to cheer me up and so I agreed immediately. We went to the mall the next morning, and I had the best time. We had iced coffee and some delicious pudding. Katie also got me an adorable little hair clip, and so I bought her a bunch of new clothes in return. We were about to head home when Katie said, Hey, Feather, um, I have a cousin whose sneakers are falling apart. Would it be okay if you helped me get him a new pair? Of course, anything for my best friend. Making my best friend happy was the most wonderful feeling in the world. I'm so grateful to have such a lovely person like her to come into my life. But then, the next day, I walked into class to see Katie being all lovey-dovey with the boy who took my lollipop. So that's the David that she mentioned, and on his feet were the brand new sneakers that were supposed to be for her cousin. Why is he wearing the shoes I bought? Then Katie pulled me outside and explained profusely, Feather, calm down. The, the shoes were too big for my cousin, so I gave them to David. I didn't lie to you, I promise. Fine. Please just don't let me see him wearing them again. I felt really bad since Katie seemed really sad after hearing what I said. At that moment, David approached me. What's up, toddler? You got a problem with my new kicks? I froze in fear. Then thankfully, an announcement came through the speaker. David Peterson, please come to the principal's office immediately. Turns out he's in trouble for spray painting a teacher's car. At least someone already helped me teach him a lesson, but that wasn't all. A few more of my classmates also got detention for cheating on the math quiz yesterday. 
While some others got caught skipping classes, it was such a crazy morning. It's as if someone was trying to play the hero here. Finally, it's lunch break. Hoped things would be better in the afternoon, but... Huh? What is this? A poster of me? It also says underneath, Feather the toddler is the snitch. Katie took a look at it and said that the best way to deal with these kinds of jokes was just to play along. Um, I'm not sure about that, but it seems like the only way now. And so, I climbed on an empty chair in the cafeteria and started speaking loud and clear. Mm, may I have everyone's attention, please? Hi, I am Feather the Toddler, and I am proud of it. Instead of getting the response I'd hoped for, what I got back was food. The whole cafeteria was laughing and throwing food at me. I covered my face, trying to dodge it, but the floor got slippery from all the greasy food, so I ended up falling. Oh no, I scratched myself. I could only lay on the ground out of pain. People finally stopped as they saw me bleed. All I could vaguely hear was a familiar voice calling my name. I woke up in the hospital to find Liam sitting next to me. Feather, you're awake. Do you feel pain anywhere? Well, Liam? Why are you here? Where's Katie? Katie? You're still worried about Katie? She's the one who was behind all this. She told the principal about your classmates and told everyone it was you to make them hate you. What? How is that possible? Turns out the guy who was always wearing a hoodie and mask was Liam. Liam had always been suspecting something shady in Katie's behavior. So, after failing in warning me about her, he decided to look out for me himself instead. I cried and tried to hug him despite the pain on my arm. Then, Liam showed me a shocking video of Katie talking trash about me to everyone. Oh, why was Feather carrying my books, you ask? It's because her parents work for my family's corporation and she'll do anything I tell her to as long as I give her some money. <laughs> Seeing the anger and also disappointment in my eyes, Liam calmed me down and said he had a plan to expose my so-called best friend. When I returned to school a few days later, I stormed straight over to Katie. It's you! You're behind it all! I already know everything. <laughs> Stop being ridiculous, Feather. You got busted and now you're trying to blame me. Drop the act. No one's falling for it. At the end of class, Katie suddenly gathered everyone. People, head over to the lecture hall. I have something very interesting to show you guys. Oh boy, I wonder what else she has planned. Liam and I quickly followed the crowd and found Katie standing on stage. Oh, Feather, I'm glad you're here. This is about you after all. The screen started playing a video of me sitting on my swing, playing with my dolls, and taking armfuls of candy out of the pantry. Do you see that, everyone? Feather is just a toddler in a teenager's body. Such a weirdo. I was waiting for everyone to start laughing, but the crowd stayed completely silent. Then Katie hesitantly continued, Not only that, she's also the poser who snitched on us. Then, to her surprise, the angry crowd started booing and shouting at Katie, saying she is the evil snitch. Then they turned to me. Your rooms are actually pretty cool. I wish I had a snack pantry like that. It's so awesome. Katie sounded panicked as she continued talking more trash stuff about me, but no one listened. Turns out, Liam had set up a group chat in which he'd posted proof of Katie's actions, including the video of her talking to David, and also pictures of her coyly walking out of the principal's office after she must have snitched on everyone, and her putting up that mean poster about me. Katie, you're the one embarrassing yourself. Everyone knows that you're a snake in the grass. I trusted you, and what I get back are all these lies and schemes. I feel so ashamed for ever calling you a friend. As Katie looked around at the unimpressed-looking crowd, she realized her game was up and quickly fled the scene. Later on, we arrived home to see my angry-looking parents standing next to Katie's mom and dad who had all their luggage packed ready to move out. Yes, Liam had already told them everything. In the end, Katie's parents made her apologize to me. Only after a lot of persuading did my parents let them keep their jobs. I never saw Katie again, but I did make a bunch of new friends that I invite around sometimes. The snack pantry is a big hit. <laughs> Now, I wear whatever I like without worrying about being judged. Most of all, I'm enjoying my school life, and it's all thanks to the help of my trusty soulmate, Liam. Wow, it's been a busy day at the salon. What can I say? It's all thanks to my top-notch hairstyling talent. Ta-da! What did you do to my hair? Platinum blonde is the current trend, ma'am. I, I asked for brown! How can I go to school looking like this? Ugh. She has no eye for beauty. <sighs> but, oh no, this dumb machine. <sighs> At least it's not completely burned. Were you dosing off while cutting my hair? 
Give us our money back now! Money? I've only worked here for a week. How am I supposed to pay them back? Ask my parents? No way. I, the beautiful Olivia, had declared in front of them that I hated school and would build my own career through my passion for hairstyling, not with any of those boring books. So, I left my hometown and got a job at this fancy hair salon in the big city. I would prove to my parents that I could actually earn money with my talent. Ugh! But now my boss was going berserk at me. Oh, dearie me. There's no need to make a fuss over such a measly amount of money. I shall pay for it on her behalf. I turned around and, wow, it was this graceful-looking middle-aged woman. Her outfit, hairstyle, and manners all screamed elegance and luxury. Pretty girl, I can see that you have a keen eye for beauty. The only thing you're missing is an experienced mentor's guidance. And I happen to know someone. I can't believe it. Mr. Fullington, the world's number one hairstylist, was going to be my mentor. Of course, it's all thanks to this awesome lady. Oh, wait. Mom. I should call her mom now, as she's just adopted me. She must have taken a liking to me, seeing how determined I was, pursuing my passion despite all hardship. She and her husband are millionaires, who couldn't have children, so, yeah, they decided to take me in. Man, this is the best thing to happen to me... ever! Olivia, school isn't the only way to success. With your talent, the road can be much shorter. My foster parents are so kind. Just look at this room! I feel like a princess. Just look at this gigantic bed, satin sheets, and walk-in closet. Better still, they even arranged for a makeup artist and a stylist to spend all day helping me look fabulous. The rich kid's life sure was sweet. I was so immersed in all of it that I almost forgot the main reason why I agreed to do this. The hairstyling course with Mr. Fullington. Mom, Dad, I know that you're both very busy, but I've been waiting so long. Has Mr. Fullington forgot about our appointment? Oh, sweetie, I'm sorry, but he's been sick, so his schedule has all been put off till next month. Don't worry, darling. In the meantime, why don't you try attending some fancy parties on our behalf? It's a good chance to expand your social circle and learn how to make money from all the best. Oh, that sounds pretty good. If I could make lots of money, then my parents would have to take me seriously and stop their stupid go-back-to-school demands. As soon as I arrived at the party, all these new friends gathered around and complimented on how beautiful I looked. The rich guys went crazy for me, too. I instantly became the center of attention. This one guy called Bruce introduced himself as the son of the CEO to the top media corporation in the U.S. Olivia, that exquisite face of yours was made for the big screen. You should play the leading role in our new movie. Oh, acting? I'd never thought about it before. Hmm... Walking down the red carpet and posing in front of hundreds of cameras did sound appealing. It's worth a try, right? I was still stunned at Bruce's offer when I felt something cool on my finger. Oh my gosh, a sparkly red diamond ring? William, heir to the Geogems Limited. Pleasure to meet you, Olivia. Please consider this my greeting gift. And this continued all evening, until I couldn't hold any more stuff. Flowers from Justin, a jewelry set from Andrew, a perfume collection from Antony, and this watch from... Jeez, I couldn't remember anymore. I was trying to slip away when a handsome guy blocked me. You're stunning, Olivia. Can I see you tomorrow? A date? I didn't even know him. No, no. What a pity. I'm meeting my old friends at West High tomorrow. Sorry, it's not that I'm picky or anything, but dating can't be that easy, right? Phew, finally home. What an eventful evening. Just then, I got a call from Minnie, my best friend. Minnie told me that some mean girls at school were spreading rumors that I stole money from my parents, then packed up and ran away. Okay then, let them tittle-tattle. Tomorrow, I'll show those meanies who's the real deal. Yay, it's so nice to see Minnie again. We immediately chatted non-stop about all kinds of things. Then suddenly... The hyenas appeared with the same sarcastic tone as usual. Wow, counterfeit goods are so well made these days. You know, your supposedly Birkin bag is extremely rare. There's only five of those on Earth, right? Busted! How much do supercar hourly rentals and bodyguards cost nowadays, little miss show-off? Minnie was going to defend me, but I stopped her. No need to waste time arguing with these people. <laughs>
I then grasped Minnie's hand to leave, but look, Olivia. I looked up. There was an airplane flying at very close range, and it was writing something? O L I V. The white smoke actually spelled out m my name. I've only seen this in movies. I gasped in shock as the plane landed, and stepping out of the cockpit was the guy at the party last night, Nathan. Turns out he was the youngest pilot in America and wanted to impress me with this grand gesture after being rejected yesterday. Flying in the sky is my passion. And, Olivia, I want to be your personal pilot, taking you wherever you want. Oh my goodness, I don't know what was better. Having a rich, handsome guy going out of his way to impress me, or seeing the astonished looks on my fake friends' faces. <sighs> Such thrilling days like this should have made me happy, right? But sitting among this mountain of expensive gifts, I couldn't shake this uneasy feeling. Being the center of smitten eyes and receiving countless compliments and gifts was cool and all, but Minnie's words awakened me. Olivia, do you think they really are generous enough to give you all this without asking for anything in return? No, I shouldn't accept these pricey items. I was putting them all back in their boxes to return them when my foster mom walked in. Oh no, darling. Returning gifts is considered very insulting in our society. <sighs> the world of the rich is so complicated. So I listened to her and dismissed the idea of returning those presents. But I should still return the favor, right? So I agreed to meet some of them. The first person must be the one who impressed me the most, Nathan the pilot. His airplane hangar was where we had our first date. I couldn't find anything bad about Nathan, but we just didn't click. He kept on rambling about planes, which model each was, how hard it was for him to get them, blah, 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 while I had no interest in any of this. The next guy, William, was even worse. He not only invited me, but also dozens of other beautiful girls. He even gave each girl a gemstone from his collection. A true player, so obviously a skip. Bruce was easier to talk to, but I soon realized that he had a problem. This set of glassware was custom made by the most skillful craftsman in Switzerland. It's yours if you like. Oh, wait, I'll have someone bring them over later. Look at this beautiful painting. Wouldn't it be perfect in your bedroom? Ah, but it's too big for you to carry home. I'll send it over later. What about my leading role in the movie you mentioned? <laughs> I almost forgot. But, Olivia, acting is not as easy as you think. Besides, the entertainment industry is really toxic. Please just be my princess, okay? See? He kept promising me the world and then... nothing. What a boastful, stingy liar. I didn't like any of these guys, so I must return their expensive gifts. But as soon as I carried the boxes out of the room, my foster mom stopped me. My silly Olivia, why are you so concerned about this? To them, these things are merely a drop in the ocean. But if you feel uncomfortable, I'll keep them out of sight for you. Giving them back will bring shame to our family. And you don't want that, do you? All right, that seemed like the best solution. My foster parents had been so nice to me. I shouldn't cause them any trouble. But a few days later, I discovered that they had secretly used my phone to ask Bruce for more presents. He thought I was angry, so he promised me a huge surprise tomorrow. It's weird. Why did they do that? They're as rich as Bruce's family, aren't they? I asked them why and turned out my foster parents just wanted to test Bruce as he seemed to be the most persistent in pursuing me, but had not shown his sincerity. Early next morning, I received a call from Bruce, saying that he'd sent someone over with a luxurious car, and reminded me about our date tonight. Wait, an entire car? That's too much this time! I was about to tell him to keep it when my foster father rushed in, saying that my parents were seriously ill. Oh gosh. I quickly hung up the phone and immediately went back to my hometown. Dear God, please protect my parents. Surprisingly, my mom opened the door looking perfectly fine, and there was Dad as healthy as can be watching TV. Ah, <sighs> thank goodness. My foster dad must have made a mistake. It's been a while since I was home, so I decided to stay the night. And as we were having some family time, I got another call from Bruce. Oh no, I forgot to cancel our date, and now he's at the mansion waiting for me. The problem was, Bruce couldn't find his sports car anywhere and kept on making a fuss about it. 
I tried calling my foster parents to resolve this, but I couldn't contact them the whole evening. The morning after, I returned to the mansion to find strangers going in and out. Um, what are you all doing? Hi, we're moving in. Great to meet you, neighbor. It's such a catch to find a good place like this up for rent at reasonable prices. Right in the local newspaper, am I right? For rent? No, no, no. What on earth is going on? I rushed into my foster parents' bedroom, but it was empty. Even the gifts they said they'd keep for me were all gone. They left without a trace, as if they were running away. What? Did your partners in crime leave you? Now don't you dare deny it, you fraud. What did he say? Partners in crime? Fraud? I tried explaining to him how I wanted to return all the gifts I received, but he wouldn't believe me. He threatened to call the cops if he didn't get his car back. Oh no, no way that's gonna happen. All I could do was beg Bruce to give me some time. This is the home of our town's famous sheriff. He's the only person who could help me, but all I got was, I'm sorry, but I'm retired. You're gonna have to ask someone else. What to do now? I was freaking out when, out of nowhere, no need for my dad. This is a piece of cake. I can give you a hand. I turned around to see a guy leaning on the door with a cold, arrogant look, and his arms crossed. Who is this guy? Can he really help me? We'll see. Wow, Alan really took the risk and invested a lot in this. A sports car, a mansion, expensive trips, and even this huge event. I have to admit, he looks quite handsome being all dressed up. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Alan, yep, the sheriff's son, is playing the rich heir of a big corporation chasing after a beautiful young lady, which is me. However, I didn't expect things would turn out so real. Alan's pursuit of me even made it on the local news. You guys must be curious how someone who's not a millionaire did this. Well, Alan convinced Bruce to fund our plan. He was hesitant at first, but he soon realized that this was the only way to catch the frauds and get his stuff back. So, reluctantly, he agreed. Alan is indeed a genius, and his well-thought-out strategy quickly got the fish hooked. We were making headlines everywhere, and I finally received a text from my so-called foster mom. At first, she was just asking how I was doing, and talked about how busy they were with overseas projects, until today. Olivia, how's it going with that mysterious millionaire boyfriend of yours? He seems willing to give you anything. So you will consider him, won't you, darling? As expected, these money-hungry crooks wouldn't let it slide once they heard millionaire. So I replied to her that my rich man was treating me well and wanted to throw an extravagant feast this weekend to officially announce our relationship. And I hoped my parents could put off their business trip and come join us. Tonight was the night. Gosh, I was so nervous, as my mom didn't reply to that message of mine. Will they show up, or did they sense something was off? While I was super nervous, Alan came to me and held my hand real tight. Don't worry, Olivia. Everything will work out as planned. My, my. What is this feeling? It's undeniable that I always feel so safe being with Alan. The party finally began. Alan proposed to me with this rare, precious, surrendered by gem on a ring which is one of the only three existing in the whole world. Everyone started buzzing. Alan's acting was so perfect, from his eye contact to the words he said, that I couldn't help but feel butterflies in my stomach. I... I do. When the party was over and all the guests left, I received a call from my foster mom telling me to go to the back gate. As predicted, they offered to keep the engagement ring for me. Drop the act, frauds! The two were still processing what was happening when the cops barged in and arrested them. It worked! Can't believe I've successfully tricked these notorious scammers. <laughs> what about my car? My Bugatti? Where is it? Oh, I almost forgot the main sponsor for this perfect plan. Without him, we definitely couldn't pull this off. Our stingy millionaire Bruce Dillon. I bet there hasn't been a single day gone by that he didn't think about his missing gifts, huh? <laughs> That reminds me. This sparkling, precious ring, too. I quickly took it off, passed it to Alan, and told him to give it back to Bruce. But the minute the surrenderbite ring left my finger, Alan put on something else. Oh my god, another ring? Your role as a millionaire's girlfriend may be over, but will you be a girlfriend to an ordinary guy like me, Olivia?
Yes! A million times yes! After all this mess, I now realize that I've still got a lot of learning to do. So I've decided to listen to my parents and finish school. Turns out, if I really paid attention in class, it's actually pretty interesting. And Minnie is still my amazing BFF, who let me have free reign to experiment on her hair. And of course, this cute future detective too. Babe, time to change your hairstyle. Ugh, who's calling at this hour? Orla, your sister is having a wedding this weekend. Make arrangements to attend. My sister Rowan is having a what now? She had never had a date, and she's only 19. Are you still listening, Orla? Surely you have a boyfriend by now, so bring him along. Boyfriend? Yeah, right. As if I haven't been absolutely caught up with school lately. No matter what I did, in Mom's eyes, I was always the idle one, who partied around with boys, while Rowan was obedient and hardworking. Ugh. You see, my parents divorced ages ago, so I live with my father in Atlanta, and my mom and sister Rowan live in the suburbs of Denver with my grandma. It's been a long time since I've met her, so I wouldn't mind paying a visit on this occasion. Only, where am I meant to find a guy at this short notice? My dear hometown, it's been a hot minute. Oh, there's Paul. Sorry I kept you waiting. Let's go, gorgeous. Let me introduce my boyfriend, a local college boy that I found on the internet. Even though we're on business terms, look at him. Handsome, gallant, and polite. I hit the jackpot. As we pulled up at the house, I saw my grandma waiting outside with a casual-looking guy. Oh, he must be my future brother-in-law. I happily ran over to hug grandma. Rowan, you're back. Mata has been waiting for you. My, my. Look at our match made in heaven. Is she confusing me with Rowan? I was about to correct her when suddenly the guy pulled me close and said, We are indeed a charming couple, aren't we, honey? Excuse me? Where is he putting his hand on? And is his eyesight just as bad as grandma's to think I was Rowan? Just then, Rowan stepped forward. But strangely, she just smiled at us, then linked arms with Paul. And this is my boyfriend, grandma. Do you think we look great together? What's wrong with everyone? Had I been zapped into some parallel universe or something? Suddenly, Rowan dragged me across the garden. Then she told me how grandma had been diagnosed with Alzheimer's which had progressed so quickly recently, meaning sometimes she forgets. Other times she remembers, muddling everyone and everything. Not wanting to upset or confuse her, my mom and sister decided to act according to grandma's memories, including this wedding. And of course, that Mata guy is not my sister's real fiancé, just a close classmate. But now she's confusing the two of us, so the lead role in this wedding play is yours now. Grandma's memory was deteriorating. Yeah, that sucks but was a fake wedding necessary? Also, the thought of pairing up with that rude Maida guy sickened me. No way! Listen to your sister, kid. Everyone is doing it for grandma. Did he just call me kid? Okay, that's it. This guy needs to know his place. But before I could jump at him, both my parents appeared and started lecturing me. Ugh, whatever. I stood my ground. Faking a marriage is ridiculous. Happy now? Dad's little girl is acting spoiled again. Please, I raised her just fine. And you, if you'd taken care of your mother better, she wouldn't have been this way. Not again. They only see each other once every couple of years, but the bickering always followed almost instantly. <sighs> What's going on? You two have never been at odds. What's wrong? At the sight of Grandma, Mom and Dad suddenly took a 180. A moment ago, they were screaming each other's heads off, but now they're being all smiley, lovey-dovey. How ridiculous. But did Grandma really not remember that my parents were divorced? Her condition seemed to be as bad as they said. This meant I had no choice but to go along with their plan to make her happy. However, I was no professional actor. Constantly improvising according to Grandma's memories was not easy, especially when I was stuck with the annoying Maida for a scene partner. My mind was too full of thoughts to sleep properly, so I got up extra early and went for a stroll in the garden. Out of nowhere, Maida ran to me and grabbed my hand. Did you sleep well last night, Bay? Huh? Who's he acting for? In this empty garden? Or is this just an excuse to touch me? 
I forced my hand away from his, but then he had the audacity to whisper in my ear. Shush, Grandma's watching us from upstairs. Ugh, what a creep. Meanwhile, Rowan said she wanted to please Grandma, but actually, she wasn't even a little bit cooperative. At lunch, while I had to squeeze out a smile as made a spoon-fed me soup, Rowan was being distant toward Paul, her boyfriend. Paul, my sister also likes being fed. Right, that's her favorite dish. Paul got the point right away, so he scooped up some soup and gave it to Rowan as Grandma watched expectantly. But for some reason, my sister seemed irritated, shoved his hand away, and said she's allergic to it, which was some total nonsense. Grandma was obviously discontent hearing that, then stood up to leave the table first. What's the matter with you, Rowan? You didn't have to look so annoyed in front of Grandma. Why can't you just work with Paul? That's how Rowan's always been. She's shy and couldn't open up easily to strange guys as you can. Uh, what did she mean by that? Before I could reply, Dad came to my defense. How can you say that? Isn't Orla trying her best to play her part and not make Grandma suspect a thing? Oh, so you two are doing great, and we're just ruining everything? There they go again. Usually Rowan and I would just stand there and watch, because only our grandma can stop their fights. And this time was no exception. As soon as they saw grandma, my parents immediately turned around and held each other's hands. Mita was just as quick when he grabbed my arm as well as grandma's, and then invited us for a walk. Hey, who are you? Why are you being so friendly to us? Oh dear. It was only a few seconds ago and her memory of him had already vanished. I immediately said Maida and I went to the same college and he was visiting me. <sighs> I thought that was it, but no. Speaking of college, she immediately asked why we were home when we should be at school. The whole family froze at her reaction. My parents carefully mentioned the wedding to see if she remembered anything. But she snapped. How can you talk about marriage when my two grandchildren are still of school age? Have you two lost your mind? So, the next morning, I had to go to the university with Rowan. But the cherry on top was riding this tiny pink bicycle together per grandma's order. <sighs> this was embarrassing, but how can we refuse? She only recalled the old memories. So, I wandered around here all day waiting for Maida and Rowan to finish their classes. Suddenly, I spotted Paul with some girls. Hey, what are you doing here? Oh, Orla. Uh, I... I'm just giving directions to these freshmen. Actually, I'm waiting to pick up your sister. Wow, Paul seems to have a real crush on Rowan. I have to help my timid as a hair sister seize the opportunity. I took Paul to the lecture hall just as class was wrapping up, then pushed Rowan towards him, wished them a happy outing, and quickly pulled Maida away to give the couple some space. Finally, I could go home. But just as we reached the college gate, we saw Dad helping Grandma come this way. Seeing my face turn pale, Dad immediately explained that Grandma thought today was my first day of college, so she insisted on coming to pick us up. Jeez, it was bad enough coming here on a tiny pink bike. I drew the line at my dad and Grandma picking me up. I wasn't a preschooler. Uh, I was assigned to tidy the football field. It's my turn on duty today. Don't wait for me. Oh, is that so? Take your time. I'll look around for a while. I looked at Maida, hoping he had some idea to get me out of this, but he just grinned and took the broom from me. Come on, let's clean up this place. I was only gonna fake cleaning a bit, but turns out Grandma's the most meticulous supervisor ever. Orla, there's some trash over there. Look closely, honey, there are dry leaves in the corner. Then, you have to wipe these stains with a wet cloth. As soon as she went away, I lay on the field, panting with exhaustion. Aren't you tired? Oh man, I'm already drained out. Can't imagine how bad it's gonna get for me at Grandma's age. Poor her. It's scary how one day we might forget our family. Birth, aging, sickness, death. These are things we can't change. Orla, but one thing we could do is cherishing every moment with our loved ones as these times are special. I was so wrong when, initially, I considered Maida as an impolite, annoying person. His deep thoughts made me feel comfortable enough to pour my heart out about my family. Why my parents divorced, why I didn't visit Grandma as much as I should have, and all the fights with my sister Rowan. We talked loads, and it felt like we've known each other forever. That night I kept tossing and turning, and couldn't stop thinking about how Maida diligently helped me clean up, 
about our conversation in the afternoon, and the way he helped me stand up. Oh, what's wrong with me? It's undeniable that this side of him is so attractive. But there's one problem. When we were leaving, he said to me, See you tomorrow, Rowan. Yes, Rowan. How could he? Was it because all these acts in front of my grandma got him mixed up? Or is it because she's always on his mind? Never mind. It's none of my business. The next day, I was sick of strolling around the campus, so I went to class with Rowan and Maida. Rowan's right. They seemed really close. During the lesson, both of them listened attentively to the lecturer, then turned to discuss with each other. Maida also patiently explained the part Rowan didn't understand to her. Hey, what are we going to have for lunch? What's good in the canteen? You will take this course next year too, so focus. And then they got back to their discussion, as if I was invisible. Ugh, how frustrating. Hey, are you jealous? <laughs> Don't be, we're just friends. Why did she say that? Jealous? That's absurd. Still sulking? How about we go to the cinema tonight? I'll help you too. And here we are. As planned, I would sit next to Maida while Rowan would be with Paul. Sounds good. But when Rowan was about to settle next to Paul, Maida immediately took that seat. So he didn't want to sit next to me, or he didn't want Rowan to be with Paul? Either way, he obviously didn't have feelings for me. <sighs> as soon as the movie ended, I rushed out of there, just to catch some familiar sight of... Grandma and Dad again! She started nagging and insisted on escorting me home. Why are you still out here at this hour, Rowan? There was a lot to prepare for the wedding. Now the wedding's back on? Oh dear, you two. A groom-to-be shouldn't be playing around like this. Paul? Why don't you pair me with Maida like before, Grandma? After all, we were back to our former partners. I'm with Paul and Maida with Rowan. Well, it's just a fake wedding, so it doesn't matter who I was marrying to, right? But what was this uneasy feeling? And then, it's like Grandma had telepathy to hear my wish. Right before the ceremony started, her memory suddenly reset. What are you doing sitting here? It's time! Get up there! She dragged Maida to the altar and told the best man Paul to step aside. Oh, how cute. <laughs> and everything after that was like a dream. I walked down the aisle. Maida gently looked at me and sincerely made the vow. His acting was flawless, while I was buzzing with nerves. Sensing this, he gently held my hands to calm me down. I... I... do. The crowd burst into applause, and among them, I spotted Grandma's joyful face. Despite the exciting moment, I didn't let myself forget another important mission, which was helping my big sister to get a boyfriend. So I threw the bouquet to Rowan and winked at Paul. But weirdly, she didn't seem happy about this. That evening, after all the guests left, I went to look for Maida. To be honest, I really wanted to know if he felt the same as me. Here he was, but why did he look so agitated? I was about to call him, when out of the blue he bolted to punch. Paul! Repeatedly! You jerk, stay away from Rowan, got it? What's going on? They're fighting because of Rowan? So Maida really was pretending at the ceremony. He liked Rowan, not me. Didn't you say you're just friends with Maida? What's all this? Friends don't get jealous when someone else is flirting with you. Orla, it's not what you think. Knew it. She thought she could fool me again. I turned around and was about to chase after Paul to check on him, but someone's hand grabbed mine. It was... Maida. Paul is not as kind as you think he is. Turned out, the reason why Rowan was awkward around Paul was because he always tried to touch her. Not to mention girls on social media were calling him out for taking advantage of them and cheating on them. Both Maida and Rowan knew it all, but they tried to put up with it through the wedding. However, he kept crossing the line. So today, Maida decided to teach him a lesson. So how I acted at the movies that day and just now was to protect my friend. Not because I'm jealous. I didn't know he did so much for my family. Orla, how come you're here? Isn't it still the school year? And also, your parents are so weird. When did they make up with each other? Oh, she called me by my name. She even questioned who Maida was. Her memory seems to be perfectly back. Thinking our grandma had recovered, Rowan quickly called our parents. We were over the moon thinking a miracle had happened. But then, the doctor crushed our newfound joy, saying it was a phenomenon called terminal lucidity. 
meaning our grandma didn't have much time left. None of us wanted to believe it, but there was nothing else we could do but make the most out of the precious little time we had left with her. I also decided to put college on hold to live with grandma during her last days. Each morning we would go for a walk together as I listened to her stories of the old days, and then share with her some of my fondest memories. Mom and Dad still bicker and then make up. Some things never change. <laughs> but Rowan and I are getting along much better. Turns out we have more in common than we realized. And Maida, he still comes over to visit Grandma. Then one day, Maida was saying goodbye to me when Grandma suddenly shouted out loud, Where do you think you're going? Still got loads to prepare. You think the wedding is a joke or something? Wedding again? We froze and looked at each other till Grandma yelled at us a second time. But this round, maybe Maida and I wouldn't need to act anymore. Because when I asked him if he was ready to take a vow again, he replied, Of course, Orla. I'm always ready to say those words to you every day. Hi there, I'm Anita, a science pro and robotics prodigy. I've won countless trophies, including one for making a talking replica of BB-8. But it's my crush's heart that I can't win. Tom has just refused to accompany me to the last middle school dance. But who cares? I've got my bestie Barb. It'll still be fun. We can go together. We arrived at the dance to find that everyone had dates, except for us. Well, this is a little awkward. Move. This is a dance floor, grannies. Either you dance or get out. Bet this is the first party you've ever got to attend. As if Tom would go out with such a loser. Yeah, you should try asking your robots out instead. As they walked off laughing, I felt so disheartened. Barb told me not to listen to them, but their words niggled away at me. I realized if I didn't change, then I'd waste the rest of my teen years by being a loser that got left out of all the fun. I needed to reinvent myself now before it was too late. Over the summer break, I thought it over and realized that there was only one way forward. I should flip the script, where nobody knew who I was. And this is the perfect occasion for that. High school! I purposely chose a school that's across the city. It's a bit inconvenient, but that's how to be sure I'd not run into anyone from my local middle school. Of course, except for Barb. She's going there with me also. Hey, recognize me? I'm still Anita. Like my new look? I've had a style update, ditched my glasses and all the uncool geeky stuff. Ooh, let's surprise my bestie. <laughs> Anita? Whoa, talk about a Captain Marvel transformation. Gee, thanks. This hair color is so in season right now. Hang on, you look just like Chelsea. Oh, do I? How funny. You sound like her too. Okay, so Chelsea was this popular girl from middle school. Um, yeah, I may have spent all summer studying her. All right, I actually mirrored her style and mannerisms. I'm just learning to better myself. This isn't any different from using humans as models when programming a robot. Besides, it's not like Chelsea's here to mind. Speaking of robots, how's your BB-8? No, that's my past. We'll never be cool and get boyfriends if our peers think we're nerds. Come with me after school, I'll give you a makeover too. It's okay, Anita. I don't mind being a nerd. But if this makes you happy, then you have my full support. My sweet, naive Barb has no idea how incredible being cool would be. They're the cool kids here, aka celebrities. They're so dazzling and popular. And oh my god, who's that? He's so dreamy. So, I confidently strutted over to introduce myself to the whole group when... Ah! Luckily, no one seemed to notice my fall, or they just didn't care. <sighs> Anyways, this was only my first day here. I had loads of time to fit in with the celebrities, and then catch that hottie, who supposedly named Eric's attention. At first, the popular girls didn't notice me, but then a few days in, Lou, the celebrity's leader, had a lipstick emergency and I sprung to her rescue. See? I told you, this burgundy shade really pops against your cool undertone. Ruby Woo? That's so 2015, Ashley. You can put that away. And easy peasy, I became part of the group. They invited me to their parties, shopping trips, and spa days. It's like entering a completely new world. An extra shiny one. I got to sit with them at lunch where they Ubered low-calorie food. Normally, I had the same as them, but today my mom packed me a special sandwich with the moist maker, just like Ross's from Friends. Sorry, guys, but Anita doesn't share food. <laughs> Are you seriously going to drink that? You can practically see the fat and lactose swirling in it. Gross. Oh, okay. Looks like the moist maker would have to wait. I looked around and saw Barb sharing her mom's amazeballs mac and cheese with her new geeky friends. I've not spoken to Barb properly in weeks. 
We kept trying to reschedule as I had manicures with Lou, Haley's party, and all these other after-school shopping trips. Which kept getting so expensive. Aren't you gonna buy that? You haven't bought anything. Um, that's because I only wear tailor-made clothes made of Egyptian cotton or at least silk linen. Um, okay. In that case, you can be our assistant. Make sure you wear a cute cardigan tomorrow for our OOTD Instagram post. Ashley has made a list of the available colors. That's why I had to use all of my allowance on this cardigan. But it's fine. That's just how popular clicks have to be. And it's so nice of them to let me hang around. I proudly strutted alongside the celebs, looking just like one of them. Other students gobbed at us, and it sure felt good. But suddenly, this dizzy spell came over me. I started shaking and feeling cold. Then, pitch black. I woke up in the infirmary to Barb's worried face. Oh good, you're awake. It's no surprise you passed out. You aren't eating enough. What? I'm eating just fine. Besides, skinny is chic. I'm not arguing with you. You're lucky your head didn't hit the floor thanks to Eric. Eric saved me? He must have caught me like in a romantic movie. This diet is amazing. I wouldn't have been in Eric's arms without it. Later, I tried to thank him, but he put his headphones on and walked off. And I never saw him at any of the celeb's parties or anything. A hot guy like him is probably hanging out with an even cooler clique and interested in even more popular girls. I need to try harder. But my geeky side wasn't going to stay suppressed. One time, this guy slated Spider-Man 2099, my favorite character ever. Dude doesn't understand how the multiverse works, and his suit sucks. Are you kidding me? As if you know how it works, his suit incorporates Parker tech and has stealth features and exploding spider saucers. Okay, cool it, new girl. It's just some weirdo jumps around in spandex. Right, be cool. Cool kids didn't geek out over superheroes. Luckily, everyone else seemed distracted. I turned to look and saw them already flocked around some new kid with a huge backpack, a comic t-shirt, and jeans. Huh, it's like looking at middle school me. When I managed to get a closer look, I almost fell over in shock. It was Chelsea! Why would pretty popular Chelsea do a total 180 on her looks? I tried to avoid Chelsea. But then one time when I was trying to approach Eric, she appeared, and he actually spoke to her. Does Chelsea know Eric? Since when? How come? Ah! Time stopped as I stared into his big, dreamy eyes, but falling for each other again? <laughs> he might as well just stay in his arms. I quickly walked away and passed Chelsea. Our eyes met. Did she recognize me? She didn't say anything, but was that a smirk I saw? I needed to find out if Chelsea really recognized me, so I turned to Barb. It was a bit awkward, as we hadn't spoken in a while. But luckily, Barb was cool about it and said she'd try to find out. We chatted a bit, and then she asked me, We are still going to Comic-Con on the 7th, right? Yeah, of course! Can't wait! I was excited about Comic-Con, until... A few days later, the celebrities had a big announcement. They were attending Conan Gray's concert on the 7th. Are you coming, or do you have some tragic nerdy convention to go to? Huh? That's oddly specific. I panicked and said yes to the concert. We had to give money to Asher the next day and she would take care of purchasing everyone's tickets. But thanks to that overpriced cardigan, how am I supposed to afford this? Hmm, I guess there was one way to pay for it. Me and Barb's Comic-Con fund, which we'd been saving since middle school. I was only borrowing and would definitely pay it back. The following day, the celebs gathered to discuss the concert. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw a flustered looking Barb. What about our plan? Did you just spend all your savings on some concert you don't even care about? I'm sorry, I promise I'll pay you back, I just needed some time. So, you spent my share too? How could you? I felt terrible. I never meant to upset my friend like that. I just really wanted to fit in. Only, after that day, I found myself miserable with the celebs. The more time I spent with them, the more things about them got me second-guessing this group's dynamic. For instance, they talked a lot about the importance of being eco-friendly, but ordered Uber Eats almost every day, and constantly brought new, cute, reusable straws in Stanley Cups. Moreover, it was always lose weight or the highway, and they even trash-talked their own group members behind their backs. I found myself often looking around for Barb and then feeling extra guilty. On my way home, I was dragging my feet, feeling awful, when I passed an appliance store. I saw some students from my school's robotics team struggling with their droid, so I gladly offered a hand. If you want my lunch money, take it, but please leave Gears Brosnan alone! We worked hard on it! I tried explaining that I just wanted to help, but they kept pushing me away. I stared down at myself and realized that I wasn't welcomed because I'd given up everything to look like a celebrity. However, I didn't feel like one. I'd stood by and let the celebs push everyone else around. Was this really the life I wanted? 
That weekend was supposed to be spa day with the celebs, so I went out to the mall to ask Lou for my concert ticket. I was going to sell it and he barfed back. Only when I got there, I saw Chelsea with them. But she looked like her cool self again. Uh-oh, I better go. But too late. Chelsea caught me and told everyone. Guys, look who's here. Fun fact, Anita and I used to be friends back in middle school. Cover yourself in foundation all you want, but your nerdiness will still show. Everyone started laughing, and that's when it dawned on me. They were all in on Chelsea's plans to expose me. I wanted to leave, but I still needed my ticket back. Sure, you can have it back, but on one condition. Wash off your Chelsea disguise and go back to being pathetic little you again. And so they told me to wash my hair in this decorative basin in a lush store before everyone's confused eyes and their live streaming cameras. I swallowed my pride and did it for Barb. But afterward, Lou turned back on her word. Actually, I gave it to Chelsea. Tough luck. Oops, too bad I never agreed to the deal Lou made with you. I felt overcome with panic and shame. I ran and I bumped into someone. Eric! Seeing how upset I was, he took me for coffee and a chat. As soon as we sat down, I burst into tears and told him how I'd lost everything. My popularity, dignity, friends. It all started to fall apart when Chelsea turned up all of a sudden. And then the domino effect took over. Chelsea? I'd always known she's catty, but I never thought she'd go that far. How can you be friends with her? <laughs> what? No, it's not what you think. You still don't recognize me? What do you mean, recognize? Then he revealed that he was from my middle school. I was shooketh! But if I squinted real hard, I guess he did look vaguely familiar. Whoa, puberty hit you like a truck. Same for you. Yeah, no, it wasn't puberty for me. I got emotionally scarred from being an outcast and became afraid of missing out on cool stuff, so I turned myself into a Chelsea clone to be popular. That's insane. But if it means anything, I prefer the old you. It's great seeing you at the school. But when I saw that you changed and joined the celebs, I was kind of apprehensive. But for real, though, I would have died for you to notice me. I was beyond surprised. He liked me all along? Suddenly, Chelsea jumped in. Why has it always been her? I changed myself to look like her. Didn't you say you liked nerdy girls? So why not me? Say what? Chelsea liked Eric? So she really copied my look. And for that reason? I'm sorry, Chelsea, but it's my feelings. I can't believe you rejected me twice for this little nerd, and she doesn't even look like herself anymore. Chelsea, it's never been about looks. It's about who she is. In the midst of it, I finally understood something. I was fine just being me. I never needed to be anything else. I've switched schools and turned myself into a dork for you. Ah! You're lucky this time. I watched Chelsea stomp out. I realized how I was constantly anxious and on edge that I'd messed up while hanging out with the celebrities. I missed the truly happy moments with real friends where I could just be me. All this time, I thought I'd been missing out on all the fun, but turns out, I missed nothing. The true way to have beautiful teenage years is to spend it with people that really appreciate you and do the things that you actually enjoy. I thanked Eric, then left. There was something important I needed to do first. I went home and fixed my BB-8, then took it over to Barb's house. Sorry, Barb. I'm so sorry, Barb. I was so desperate to be cool that I overlooked what really mattered. I miss you and our friendship so much. I missed you too. And I saw that humiliating video and just wanted to know you were okay. On second thoughts, I'll forgive you if you give me your BB-8. <laughs> no can do, as I'm selling it online to make money to pay you back. I only brought it here to make my apology more meaningful. Did it work? We both hug. The next few days at school, I tried my best to fix things. I returned to my old image, well, with a slight upgrade. I can't let my beauty skills go to waste now. And I dug out all my geeky stuff. I showed up at the robotics club, and this time I confidently strode over and immediately fixed their robot. I told you I could help. Don't judge a book by its cover. That's a celebrity's job. Look at you, all happy and smiley with your own loser nerd kind. Yeah, I'm happy. While you once tried and failed to be one of us, remember? Being a nerd isn't just about appearance, it's about what's inside. By the way, how was the concert? I heard your fanatic behavior got you kicked out. Sounds exciting. Chelsea and the celebs looked fuming as they sashayed off, but I didn't care, as I was finally back where I belonged. I was skipping to the kitchen to see the apple bag Dad had prepared for my school picnic. Aww, how thoughtful of him. I excitedly took a bite, but it tasted like it had been left to rot for a decade. I frantically checked the bag and saw this was not the only bad one. Dad! Hey, I'm Doris, and things like this are an everyday occurrence for me. 
My dad's clumsy and colorblind, two contributing factors that sure make life interesting. Since mom passed away, I had to watch him like a hawk, else you betcha he'd mess stuff up. One time he roasted a turkey, but it was so raw as if it would jump off the plate and run around the house. And on my last birthday, he got me a pair of mittens with one bright orange and one neon green. I reluctantly tried them on, looking like a clown while people burst out laughing. Despite all that, he's still an awesome dad in my eyes. A super talented artist with incredible artwork, provided he lets me label the paint colors. And also a really big supporter of my dream. From the first time he helped me skate on the lake, I knew it was my life's calling. If I can be an artist, even though I'm colorblind, how can just a few bumps stop you from being a figure skater? Bravo. I'll definitely give him a 100. Except that he does have one bonkers rule. No dating until I'm 18. Whatever. It's not like I gave boys much thought. The only boy I spoke to was my neighbor, Ben. And dad seemed to like him. That kid's pretty good. He likes drawing and artists are caring people. Just like me. <laughs> and he seems to not attract it to girls, either. <laughs> I'm not sure about that, but it's true that we can never be a couple. His mushy manner is definitely not my type. Anyway, it's super fun having him as a friend. Since we were little, Ben always went along with anything I asked, from drawing me a unicorn picture from my room, giving me his only ice pop, to more exciting things, such as knocks and runs, and covering the neighbor's car in toilet paper. <laughs> And now, he always escorts me to my skating practice a few towns away, and just sits there scribbling something until I finish. This whole month I've been practicing so hard for the upcoming big competition in town. I'm gonna bring a medal home! This is my time to shine! I started gliding, letting the rhythm control my movement. The cold, calming breeze pushed against me like I was flying. It's time for an axle jump. I sprang into the air like a cotton ball, but suddenly lost my balance and fell flat on my face. As a result, I was ranked 29 out of 30. Duh. But surprisingly, there was one judge giving me all high marks. Finally, someone saw my potential. I was beaming when this cute guy approached me. Hi, I'm Luke. Just wanted to say that you were absolutely on point out there. Oh, he's that guy. I really want to get to know you more. How about we hang out together? I'll take you somewhere as special as you are to me. This is definitely against dad's rule, but oh boy, his killer smile made my stomach swoosh. So I ended up saying yes. I excitedly told Ben, but he gave me this sour face look. Hey, your dad will not be happy if he knows this. Just don't let him know. Luke is an expert, so he can help me hone in on my talent. You will keep this a secret, won't you? So here's my first date ever. Luke was so sweet. He complimented my ice skating and constantly gave me these loving looks. Our food arrived and delish. Bon appetit. I daintily tried the mashed potato and immediately felt the delicious taste of warm butter and chives and something pointy. A hairpin? I quickly stood up, demanding to see the manager, but Luke stopped me. Babe, you found the gift I prepared for you. Then he grabbed the hairpin and wiped it on his shirt and put it on my hair. <laughs> Maybe this was a normal thing for guys to do on dates, right? Only his gifts show didn't stop there. Later I found a ring in my steak, then a keychain in my salad. You're cute, just like this Lotso. Isn't he the bad guy? But the cherries on top were the movie tickets in my sandwich. Luke, what's this about? I just hope we could bond over watching movies together. You hate it that much? No, no, I didn't mean that. Think about it. It was kinda weird, but also the sweetest thing that had ever happened to me. Luke had a funny way of showing it, but he made me feel special and giddy. And maybe in love? Before I could think straight, he was leaning closer to me. I closed my eyes and was ready for the most romantic kiss ever. But why were his lips so hard and unmoving? What? The menu? And holding it was... Dad? You know this crazy old man? I am her father. Then Dad dragged an extra chair over to our table, plopped down, and started babbling on. Then, when Luke wasn't looking, Dad poured pepper into his coffee. Before I could say anything, poor Luke took a sip and spat it out everywhere. Mm, sorry. I thought it was sugar. You see, I'm colorblind, so it was an honest mistake. After that, he accidentally splashed the sauce on Luke's shirt, then grabbed his glass of red wine and poured it over Luke, saying he was trying to clean it. Enough! Your old man is insane! No one will ever date you again! Then he stormed away. I was furious! How could Dad embarrass me like this? You're controlling, crazy, and do the stupidest things! You don't allow me to be me, and you just scared away my date! 
None of his apologies could move me. I had the right to make my own choices without dad interrupting and being ridiculous. So I used my savings and moved out of my home to start my new life. This freedom was greater than great. I could talk to any guy and go on as many dates as I wanted. Only, I know there's always were extra eyes on me. Do you get the feeling someone's watching us? No way. It's just you and me. I've had a great time. Do you want to do it again? Ugh! What the fudge? If Dad thinks he can stop me by messing around like this, he's totally wrong. It did quite the opposite instead. I started dating loads of guys, even if I didn't like them that much. It was so nice being spoiled by boys, and my room was always full of their presence. I updated Ben all about my dating stories, but he just frowned. Yo, slow down. You want to speed date the entire town? Man, it's just dating. It's not like I've agreed to be their girlfriend or anything. But you don't even know them. Or what their intentions are. My dad doesn't understand me. Why now you sound just like him? Fine. Don't feel like you need to come here or give me rides or anything. I can make my own way to school and get my date to come with me to practice from tomorrow. I'm sorry, Doris. Ignore me. I'm probably just overthinking stuff. Yeah. Ben's Ben. <sighs> He's still the one I could count on after all. Anyway, being a serial dater can cause troubles. I muddled up Gregory's interest with Ivan's. And I forgot I already told Anton my hilarious story the third time already. I was late for my date with Hector because my previous shift with Ryan went on longer than I expected. Then being so exhausted from all of this dating, I fell asleep during my meal with Christian. Luckily for me, Ben was always there to help. What's up? You look exhausted. I don't know. Dating was fun at first, but now it left me no time to rest and now I can't even distinguish those guys. <laughs> hey, what's so funny? Nothing. It's just nice not having to share you with an alphabet of guys. Don't worry, you're the only bee in my life. One day after school, a group of boys surrounded me and started accusing me of being a cheater. Hey, it wasn't like I was anyone's girlfriend, so it wasn't classed as cheating. I'm still single, so I can go on many dates as I can. Only, my outburst seemed to make them even angrier, as all these guys shouted at me. A cop walked over. Hang on, is that dad? Hey, hey, you boys stop bothering this young lady right now. I just finished a karate course already. I'll give you a piece of my mind. See? Hiya! Hiya! What a bunch of weirdos. Thank God Dad came here on time to save me. But it's such a shame that he saw I was a helpless failure at everything. So my shame became rage. Who asked you to show up in magazine? Quit bugging me with all your nonsense. I can handle this myself. When I returned to my apartment, Ben was sitting there waiting for me. Overwhelmed with everything, I burst into tears. He pulled me into an embrace and I instantly felt better. But then... Doris, stop with the games and just go home. Games? This isn't a game. This is my life. I deserve to live it how I want to. You're too much of a coward to ever understand that. As soon as I said it, I regretted it. Ben looked so hurt and mad. He just shook his head and left. I honestly thought he was the one person who would never leave. But whatever. I didn't need him. Or dad, either. Now I had to prove to dad that I was mature enough to handle independence and could find someone much better than Ben beside me. Just wait and see. Told you. Now God bless me with this guy, Mark. A super strong and macho BF who was always ready to protect me. Babe, look out. What? Just let me handle this. Then he moved me out of the way and punched right to the wall. Wow, that's a mosquito. Thank you for saving me. One time, we were strolling through the school's garden when I spotted Ben. I immediately gave Mark a cute damsel in distress look and said, Babe, I'm so tired. I think I'm gonna pass out. Don't worry. I'll take you to the hospital. Suddenly, he lifted me over his shoulders and carried me off. My head was spinning and it made me want to faint. Literally. I begged him to put me down and let me sit for a while. Then, I suddenly saw Ben frowning at me. Ha! Huh, seeing me totally fine without him, how can he not be annoyed? But who was that? She started staring at his art passionately. Then, can you believe it? She asked him to draw her, and he agreed! I can't stay here watching this ridiculous play. So I grabbed Mark's hand and pulled him away. But that night, I kept tossing and turning, and the image of Ben and that girl couldn't get out of my head. No, no, no big deal. They were just super irritating, that's all. Too many things happened, and now it's time for me to focus on my figure skating dreams again. With my sugar plum. As he went off to buy us some drinks, who should come over to me but my first date disaster, Luke? Oh, you're still ice skating. Just give up already. I only give you a high score so you date me. Don't flatter yourself. By the way, your crazy old man's still doing good. Shut up. My dad was right about you, you jerk. Jerk? Okay, this jerk will tell the rink manager to ban you from coming here for good. 
I stared at him, open mouth, not knowing what to say, when out of nowhere Ben appeared. I don't think the skating committee would be impressed by your fake scores, do you? All it would take is one email and you can kiss your position on the judging panel goodbye. How dare you! Then he left in anger. Right at that moment, Mark returned. Babe, skating sucks, just quit it. Let's go for some trampoline then. Dars, go practice. No one dares to ban you now. Who the freak are you? Mark, stop! That's Ben, my friend. Uh, no, just an acquaintance. Dars, watch yourself with that guy. It's none of your business. Let's go, Mark. Bye, loser. The next day at school, I saw Ben with that girl again. My heart thumped in sadness, and I don't even know why. Maybe I was so used to having Ben around me, and honestly, I missed him a lot. Mark soon followed my gaze over to Ben. Isn't that the dude from the ice rink? Why are you gawping at him? He was lunging toward Ben right after. I grabbed his arm trying to stop him, but he pulled me away instead to a corner. You are my girl. Remember that. In front of me was a total stranger. Not the normal Mark I know. He was supposed to protect me, but now all I felt was scared. I couldn't move. Mark leaned over to kiss me, and I immediately blocked him. What? How dare you? Oh no, I'm screwed. Ah, uh, terrorizing your own girlfriend, I see. Nice. Ben? Right on time. You're so done with me. Then Mark grabbed a flower pot and charged at Ben, but I panickedly pushed him over before he could do anything with it. He stumbled about, mumbling something, when Ben's fist came out of nowhere. You, you, you want another punch? Mark waved his fist at him, but then turned around and hurried off. I stared at Ben. I couldn't believe my eyes. He was strong and protective, totally different from the soft Ben I knew all this time. Doris, I think it's time for you to go home. Have you ever wondered why your dad really did that? I, I... Ben was right, and the day's drama made me realize how much I missed Dad. I wonder how he was doing. I arrived back to find Dad sitting all alone, dozing off, amid a pile of mess. He was in stained clothes, and on the easel was an unfinished picture of... Me. With tear-stained eyes, I ran to him and held him tight. I'm so sorry for leaving. I thought I would be okay by myself, but I'm definitely not. I miss you. You're back. I miss you too, darling. I felt so bad for upsetting Dad. When I calmed down, we talked through our problems. Sweetie, I know. It's just hard. You're all I have left. I just worry you're too young to make the right decision and can't bear seeing these idiots hurt you. But Dad, I need experience to learn and grow too. Support me, will you? Um, of course. I always wish you can find a kind man who understands, supports you, and is always by your side, and makes you truly happy. All those qualities reminded me of someone. I kept chasing after trivial things out there, thus forgetting the one who was standing by me all the time. So I immediately went to find him. Hey, Ben. Oh, hey. You'll be pleased to know I've moved back in with Dad. Yeah, that is good news. Look, Ben, I'm sorry. I've been an idiot. I took you for granted, and now I feel very bad for this. I, um, was wondering if you'll take me to practice tomorrow? I'll think about it. And I didn't expect to see you confronting a tough guy like Mark. You're not just a timid arty type, are you? Who says I'm timid? I'm only like that when I'm with you, because it makes you happy. I'm actually fully capable of looking after myself. And, um, you. <sighs> Look at this gorgeous golden cruise. Isn't it perfect for my 16th birthday? <laughs> Here comes the most exciting part of tonight. Gifts, of course. All the guests lined up eager to hand me their presents. Mr. Robinson bought me this eau de parfum in a dainty gold bottle. Yep, approved. What's next? Ooh, a pair of Jimmy Choo's from the Mitchells? Gold, of course. Nice color, but the heels are far too low. What a bummer. I'll have to pass on this. That's right. Every single thing of mine needs to follow specific standards. Why, you ask? Well, my mom saw me as her beautiful angel deserving wonderful golden luxuries since the day I was born with this silky blonde hair and sparkling amber eyes. So much that she immediately changed my nursery interior to gold along with all my baby clothes and toys to match my features. Throughout my childhood, mom continued to spoil me with life's wonderful golden luxuries. One time, I asked for a piano, then voila! A grand classical one made from pure gold appeared. Can you believe that? Another time, I said I wanted a pony. Then, without hesitation, she took me to a farm to meet Goldie, my new mare with the shiniest golden coat. Mom, thank you so much. Honey, gold is the symbol of power and divinity. You must always remember how special you are and never accept anything less than perfection. And those are the words I've been living up to. 
back to my birthday party. It's time for birthday cake. But the flowers are pink. I want it all gold. Chef friends, please crepe them all out and replace them with gold ones. I couldn't believe my birthday was almost ruined because of that. Mom patted me on the shoulder to comfort me. Well, Dad just gave a disapproving look. It's just a cake, Lola. How are you going to fit in out there if you insist on being so picky? Maybe you should join a public school to open up your eyes a little. School? Huh, that's not a bad idea. Always being homeschooled meant I didn't have any friends. Even the guests today are all my parents' business partners. But Mom opposed the idea immediately as she didn't want me to go through any hardships. Don't worry, Mom. I'll choose a school that fits all my standards. Pretty please. And, of course, she couldn't say no. <laughs> so, here I am, negotiating straight up with the principal. I suppose painting your locker gold and bringing a personal chef to school and such are doable, but I'm afraid we don't have a private piano room. Then build one. Also, we only have outdoor sports field and swimming pool. So, just install a roof? Don't expect me to play sports in the scorching heat. Miss, unlike your previous tutor, not all the teachers here have a doctorate degree, be bilingual, and in the early to mid-thirties. Hmm, <sighs> in that case, no biggie. I'll just find another school then. No, wait, give me time. As long as your family sponsors the school as promised, I will definitely make it happen. Ha, <laughs> there you go. Finally, it's my first day of school. Immediately, all the students already swarmed around me in all of my noble vibes and fashion sense. No surprises, as this school needs a serious makeover. But wait, that blonde girl looks pretty neat. Ooh, she even carried a yellow Chanel classic flat bag. What a coincidence. Mine's a limited edition. I went to talk to her right away. Her name's Beth, and we just naturally clicked after a brief chat about fashion and cosmetics. Seemed like I found myself an amazing bestie. Every day after class, I took Beth on shopping sprees at Saks for bonding. I got her all the clothes and accessories in gold and yellow, just like mine. I even talked her into bleaching her hair to be bright as mine. We're basically twins now. There's just one problem. Wherever we went, the boys followed. If you go out with me, I'll give you the latest Gucci collection. Sorry, I just bought the whole store. I can pick the stars for you if you want. Is that so? And what should I do with those useless rocks? My dad just bought me a Ferrari. I can take you anywhere. Good for you. Too bad my Rolls Royce is there. Bye. Why do they have to make such a scene? There's no way I'd fall for those idiots. I want my Prince Charming who meets all my golden standards. Hmm, how about just letting everyone know my ideal type? Then I can suss out the pyrite from the real deal boyfriend material. With no time to waste, I created an ask me a question story on IG and asked Beth to cooperate. <laughs> now all I have to do is to list my requirements. The next morning at school, all of the dorks finally left me alone. Oh, except for this guy. Hey Sugar Plum, I can be the man of your dreams. So, this is Josh, captain of the soccer team. Also the hottest boy here. It seemed he met all of my standards. Is he my perfect missing piece? I was dead wrong. During our date, he blabbed on non-stop about how terrible it was for him for being too rich and too handsome. Ugh, how I longed to shove the steak right into his mouth and go home. But I suppose he did meet my high standards, so maybe I should give him another chance. <sighs> The next morning, during PE class, Beth dashed toward me, holding a super duper stinky shoe. Lola, Josh lied to you. He's not 6'4". Look at this nasty hiding crease insole. He's only 6'3". Ew, gross. Babe, I I'm sorry. I only did it because- That's enough. Take this stinky shoe away from me. We are over. And so, my quest to find true love is at a dead end. Again. Yet, surprisingly, luck had smelled on me once more. Later that day, I came to the practice room as usual when my favorite piece of music reached my ears. Oh my, what a heavenly sight. All of a sudden, I felt my heart skip a beat as I unconsciously walked toward that boy. Seems like someone has a really good taste in music. 
And your skills? Not so bad either. Well, as long as you open your heart to feel its soul, not just learn the notes. Then he stood up and walked away, not bothering to look back at me once. That was a bit snobby, wasn't it? Yet strangely, I stood there dazed. But wait, who am I to swoon that easily? Let's see if he met my standards first. Beth helped me to find out more about him. Turns out he's Connor, the new transfer student who's trying out for the basketball team. So, I immediately went to Ken, the captain, and whispered in his ear, asking him to come up with an excuse to make Connor get a physical exam. At my personal doctor's office, of course. The result is finally in. Natural blonde, no baldness, check. 6'5", definitely without hide and crease insoles, check. White teeth, no cavities, check. Wow, he ticks all the boxes. Then I rushed to the principal's office asking him for Connor's school report. And it was impressive. He's always in the school's top two, actively takes part in extracurricular activities, and he even won a prize in the national basketball competition. Oh my god, he's perfect. But wait, there's one condition left. This should be easy. <laughs> Just a little higher. Higher. Ha! There they are. But these girls were way too obsessed over his abs. Those are mine, okay? That's right. There's no doubt that Connor is my Mr. Right. After that, I shyly handed him a bottle of golden labeled mineral water and asked if he'd like to practice playing piano with me. My heart was thudding like crazy, but he just muttered, Sorry, but I already have a date. Then he went past me to... Lily! What? That nerdy girl with zero social skills? There's no way I can lose to her. I immediately told the principal to switch all my classes to Connor so I could easily approach him. My amazing advisor, Beth, also helped me devise a super detailed step-by-step -step strategy. Soon, Connor will get over boring Lily and fall head over heels for me. First step, scent attraction. Beth told me that Connor loves this no-brand perfume, so I sprayed a bunch of it on and confidently walked into class. But why do people keep sneezing so much? Even Connor was also frowning and holding his nose. Hey Lola, you didn't shower this morning, did you? Spraying a whole bottle of cheap perfume won't help. And the whole class burst into laughter. Ugh, how humiliating. Okay, plan B. Beth suggested a grand confession. Great idea. So when school ended, the cheerleaders and I started a formation right in the middle of the entrance to ask Connor out. But before he could react, a girl suddenly lost her balance and dragged everyone down on top of me. Ouch! This time was sure to move him to tears. But when I was cheering for him, Connor somehow missed his shot and the ball flew straight at me, causing me to tumble face first into the armpit of this smelly guy. Yuck! Why did everything keep going wrong? <sighs> Suddenly, I bumped into... Josh? He grabbed my hand and started begging me to take him back. He said he tried all kinds of ways to grow taller and actually managed to reach 6'4 now. So I should stop pursuing Connor and become his princess instead. Jeez, I'm really not in the mood for this desperado. Let go of me! I then ran into Beth while leaving. She came to tell me that she figured out another way to make Connor mine. It seems like he's really into Lily. We have to separate them. So, I called Lily to a corner and told her as long as she stayed away from Connor, I would buy her whatever she wanted. You know, not everything can be bought. Connor isn't interested in you, so you'd better give up. You're just annoying him. What? I didn't expect quiet, nerdy Lily to say that to someone as lustrous as me. Lily's words had been bothering me all day. Was I wrong to continue pursuing Connor? Suddenly, someone ran past the window and splashed an entire bucket of paint onto Lily. I sat there baffled at what had just unfolded, when Connor immediately took his jacket off and covered Lily up. You're behind this, aren't you? You've really crossed the line. Stay away from us. Wait, he thought I did that? It's true I didn't like Lily, but I just wanted her to stay away from him. I never wanted her to be covered in ghastly purple paint. But the worst was yet to come. As the next day, Connor arrived at school with pitch black hair. Y your beautiful hair. Wh why did you ruin it? 
but Connor just tutted at me and tried to pull Lily away. You know, there's so much more to Connor than his hair color. Do you even like him for him, or just because he happened to meet all of your absurd standards? If you're really into him, why not change your standards for him? I was speechless. Lily was right. I really thought all those standards were enough to make up an amazing boyfriend. Then I realized how Josh had what it takes. Still, I didn't want him. I only wanted Connor. Let's go, Lily. Someone this naive and spoiled will never understand what true love is. Leave her to her scheming. Wait! Why do you keep insisting that I'm the one who harmed Lily? Drop the act. I know that paint stunt was just one of your many dirty tricks. Beth's already sent me the video where you failed to bribe Lily. Huh? Beth? Why did she do that? I was still clueless when suddenly the principal called Beth to his office. I rushed there to find out the culprit splashing paint on Lily was caught, and he revealed that the mastermind was Beth. At first, she tried to deny it, but when the boys showed us their text about the deal, she had to tell the truth. You, you stole everything from me. Before you came here, I was the it girl, but now people only see me as your replica. Why are you so obsessed with that hideous golden color and your stupid standards? I can't believe Josh actually likes you while well, I was the one by his side when you dumped him. Huh? So Beth liked Josh all this time? She even accepted to date him in secret. But turned out Josh only treated her as a side piece while he tried to win me back. If I can't have Josh, you can never have Connor. Unbelievable! So all this time, I'd let a fox guard the geese. I couldn't bear this place any longer, so I skipped class and went straight home. That night, on seeing how upset I was, Dad came to comfort me. I cried and told him all about my love life and friendship troubles. Honey, maybe it's time you saw others differently. Those standards don't mean anything. You should open your heart and allow yourself to see the good in people. Dad was right. I was so dead set on them that I couldn't see the true nature of the people around me. I chose Beth and Josh based on those standards, but both of them let me down. Meanwhile, Connor deliberately broke them, yet I couldn't shake him from my mind. The standards were like my music sheets. I played each note correctly, but I was so caught up in the practical side of it that I'd forgotten to embrace the soul. So the next morning, I went to apologize to Connor for the troubles I caused him and Lily. I just want you to know, I really like you, no matter what color your hair is. But may I ask you one question? What is it about Lily that you like so much? What? You think I'm dating Lily? <laughs> She's my cousin. Uh-oh, this is so embarrassing. <laughs> but wait, in that case, does that mean I still have a chance? Do you remember when you were 10, you participated in a children's piano contest? A gold necklace was stolen from the hotel you were staying at. Yeah, I just have a vague recollection about that incident. The suspect was a blonde boy, a female employee's son, but I noticed the necklace peeking through a man's pocket instead. Leave the boy alone! This man is the thief! So that kid was Connor? He was grateful and super impressed with the innocent and righteous girl back then that he recognized me right away the day we met again. However, when he saw how cocky I was, he thought I'd change for the worse and ignored me. Now I see, the admirable girl I know is still there after all this time. So, I wouldn't mind if we start getting to know each other anew. Really? Wish me luck this time, you guys. <laughs> the bell had already rung, but here I was, still stuck in chemistry class. Mr. Evans won't stop droning on about the big test coming up. Abigail! Abigail! You do know what a bond is, right? That's easy. My dad goes on about them all the time. U.S. treasuries, Japan bonds... They are financial bonds. We're talking about chemical bonds for Christ's sake. Close enough. Don't you think I deserve a grade increase? Enough. Go and meet your homeroom now. This is unacceptable. Jeez, his bad mood must have been contagious for adults, as Miss Garcia was also in a foul mood. So, Abigail, I will organize a meeting with your dad. M my dad? No, no, he'll go mad and take away my credit card. This seriously cannot go on anymore. Your grades are in a downward spiral. I promise, I'll actually study this time. Please, let me prove it by acing my next test. Your next test. Let's see. That appears to be your chemistry final in two weeks' time. That's perfect. I need time to process all the knowledge I've been learning anyway. And, phew, crisis averted. Now, where's Norma? 
I need some retail therapy with my bestie. Hmm, so I have two weeks to work this out. I mean, you can probably cram in quite a bit within that time. No, Norma! I have to figure out what I need to buy before my dad locks the card! Right then, a nearby waiter suddenly tripped and spilled orange juice onto... Norma and her newly brought Chanel bag! Oh no! But to my surprise, she just smiled and dismissed the waiter. What was that, Norma? What's got into you? Love, I guess? It's still early days, but I'm in love, Abby. <sighs> Isn't the world so dreamy and beautiful? Hmm, you are... kinda happy? Hold up, Mrs. Garcia is single. If I found someone special, then she'd be too distracted to call in my dad for the meeting. Yeah, I guess. Or, you know, you could actually study. Don't be ridiculous. <sighs> Mr. Evans is single too. Two birds, one stone. <laughs> so the next morning, I joined Mr. Evans' chemistry club to spy on him. Wanna hear a joke? What do you think zero says to eight? Nice belt! <laughs> Hey girl, can I be the photon to your electron and take you to an excited state? Please, somebody save me already! Yo, Callum, you're late to the party. We're having a blast over here. Are you coming home with me or Mrs. Garcia today? Miss Garcia? Hi, Hank. My mom's staying late at school today, so... This Callum guy is Miss Garcia's son? I sure came to the right place. Mr. Evanson gave some boring lecture about states of matter. After drawing a whole maze of weird symbols and stuff on the board, he asked if anyone had any questions. Here comes my chance. Oh, good. Curiosity is the gateway to knowledge. Go ahead, Abigail. I was wondering if you like tea or coffee? Oh, and also, are you more of a dog or cat person? Can you please pay attention to the lesson? Callum, as a top student, I think you can help her. Of course you will, Mr. Evans. Poor guy, he's totally oblivious that he's been chosen for my master plan. Who made him Miss Garcia's son in the first place? So, Callum, right? You know, your mom's actually my homeroom teacher. Yeah, I got that figured out long ago. Wait, what? You already knew about me? How can I not? The lowest scoring student in every class? You're my mom's favorite dinner topic. That's why I'm here! Studying to change your mom's dinner topic? Could you help me with that? Nope. I don't know what you're up to, but keep me out of it. No way I was letting this plan fail. So I decided to follow Callum to the library after school to learn more about Miss Garcia. Oops, what a coincidence. Didn't expect you to be here. Thought you'd be studying with your mom 24-7. We're just normal people who do other things apart from studying. You know, reading, watching movies, talking. I guess you and your mom only read specialized books. <laughs> Quite the opposite, actually. We both enjoy Victor Hugo. What about you? Since when were you suddenly interested in chemistry? M me Why, why not? I've always had the biggest passion for chemistry. The way all the substances interact with each other is mind-blowing. Chemical bonds, you know? If you're that interested, then yeah, I'll make you a master of chemistry. But first, you may want to try reading your book the correct way. Did he just say he'd help me with chemistry? Hmm, why does my gut instinct tell me trouble is on the way? I came home with Callan's precious piece of information about his mom and forged the cheesiest love letter, well, on behalf of Mr. Evans, of course, and made sure to hand deliver it. Who knew someone as strict as Miss Garcia had a soft spot for Victor Hugo romance novels? <laughs> From my hiding spot, I saw Callum open the door and get the letter. Okay, first bird down. The next morning, I was excited to peek into the teacher's room to check on Miss Garcia. But why is the principal here? And in his hand is the love letter. Ye who suffer because ye love, love yet more. To die of love is to live in it. From David. David Evans? <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Bryce. That's actually my, uh, literature assignment. Wrong address. <laughs> How in the caramel fudge did this letter end up here? Callum obviously got the letter. I decided to sneak the letter directly into Miss Garcia's bag afterward. Better safe than sorry. In the following days, I needed to send Mr. Evans the other love letter, too. Only, Callum was a little too determined to turn me into a chemistry master. He made sure I got the notes imprinted in my brain, questioned me on the topics like an FBI agent interrogating a hard case, and even had his eyes fixed on me every time I carried out the experiments. I got no time left for my plan. You know what I've come to find out? You're actually not that bad at studying. Just need some more attention. As if I care. When will he leave me alone so I can take the other bird down? Right then, Mr. Evans suddenly called Callum to the discussion room next door. Gotta go. You can finish the oxidation. Remember to measure carefully and not take your eyes off of it for a second. Don't sweat it. I've got this. 
As soon as he left, I sneaked into Mr. Evans' room and put the letter in his bag. But when I was about to leave, something caught my eye. A picture of young Mr. Evans. Yikes! Did too much studying and no loving make his hair leave him for good? Hmm, he has a lot of books in here. Some of them are by... Victor Hugo! Ha! Huh. Seems Mr. Evan and Miss Garcia are made for each other. Oh, sugar! The experiment! I ran back to the lab and poured all the substances in... But it was... Weird. What did I tell you? All the time spent on this experiment, just to see it burn! Oh, wait. What is this purplish substance? Mauve! We've accidentally created mauve instead! You're so brilliant, Abby! Didn't really know what was going on, but... Are those my cheeks I can feel blushing? What's gotten into me? Didn't know you two are progressing that fast. Maybe keep it down a notch in public. Seeing Hank made us both turn cherry red and jolt apart. It was just a joke, but somehow my heart was flipping. After the incident, Callum didn't seem so annoyed with me anymore. Instead, he was kind of caring. He would patiently explain things I didn't understand and clean up after our experiments. Talk about having great chemistry together. Literally. The two-week mark soon arrived, but strangely, all the questions were not hard at all. I know all of the answers. They're all on topics I covered with Callum. Later that day, I was walking when Callum zoomed over to me. Mr. Evans said you passed the test. I knew you could do it. Abby, if you'd like, do you want to go out for a movie? Abby, Abby, shocking news. I just saw Mr. Evans and Miss Garcia holding hands in the school garden. Things are progressing. Norma and I both turned into excited dolphins. When Callum's happy expression fell. What are you talking about? My mom with whom? Mr. Evans, you should thank Abby. It was her plan to get your mom a new boyfriend. The plan? Is that what you call it? Passion for chemistry? So what? It worked, didn't it? This isn't gonna happen. No way. What's your problem? Why don't you want your mom to be happy? Talk about selfish. Callum couldn't answer and huffed off. He's been ignoring me ever since. And me? I decided to find a new lab partner. Well, if Hank would quit getting in the way, why did he always poke his nose in? I gave Hank a dirty look, but he just pushed Callum toward me. You two are welcome. Ugh, what gives? Callum couldn't even meet my eye. I felt kind of bad for Callum. I guess no one wants to see their parent dating their chemistry teacher, right? Why bother anyway? I should be happy because the plan has worked out. What's up with Callum? Why is he acting as if someone burglarized his house or something? Actually, Callum's dad walked out on them a couple of years back. Since then, he swore to never let anyone hurt his mom again. That's why he's so against your matchmaking plan. That explains a lot, but wait, how did you know about the matchmaking plan? Hank started to sweat bullets while Norma constantly winked at him. Hey, are you guys hiding something from me? Don't tell me- No, no, we're not dating. We- we're- You said it yourself, idiot! Hmm, that makes sense. The next morning, Miss Garcia suddenly got sick, and this Miss Flowers came in to cover. Different from our strict homeroom, Miss Flowers didn't teach much and seems pretty chill with whatever we do in class. Great, huh? Yeah, it would be if she didn't keep on flirting with Mr. Evans. Mr. Evans didn't look comfortable with Miss Flowers at all. She was obviously trying so hard to win him over. Poor Miss Garcia. She looked so happy with Mr. Evans before. My master plan can't have been for nothing. I gotta do something. So I handcrafted a reminder love letter on behalf of Miss Garcia again. That was sure to make Mr. Evans' heart give off butterfly flutters. But I was sneaking it onto his desk when Miss Flowers appeared. Abigail, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Mr. Evans is my dream man, not hers. No, he's not. He and Miss Garcia are obviously made for each other. Duh. I demand that you take that back at once. He's my heart's desire. Mine. No, he's not. He goes all gooey-eyed at Miss Garcia, not you. This is unacceptable. Detention! That's not fair, Miss Flowers. You can't punish her over nothing. You. Garcia's son, right? Wanna play Hero Saves Beauty? Detention for both of you, now! Miss Flowers? More like Miss Tyrant. What kind of a teacher made students clean the windows for detention? Ugh, these stupid windows. Breaking my back already. And Callum being all frosty the snowman with me is not helping. You've brought all of this on yourself. What? If you hadn't have given the love letter to the principal in the first place, Mr. Evans and your mom would be official already. My mom and I are fine by ourselves. Who's being stubborn now? Hank already told me everything. I understand you're upset, but have you ever thought about what your mom wants? She sure looked happy with Mr. Evans. Callum didn't say anything, but I could tell from his glazed eyes that he was thinking hard about this. When Callum and I finally got out of detention, Hank and Norma rushed in. 
We just heard that Miss Garcia has food poisoning. She's fine now, but Miss Flowers will probably cover for another week. Why do I feel like Miss Flowers has something to do with this? She visited my mom yesterday and gave her a casserole. That's it! Miss Flowers must have poisoned Miss Garcia so she could replace her. But this is getting crazy. Hmm, what can we do? How about we publicize all the love letters online so the whole school knows about Miss Garcia and Mr. Evans? I mean, if that's okay with you? Callum didn't say anything and just nodded. We immediately rushed to the IT room, but the computer's locked. Let me handle it. I know the password. With Callum's help, we posted on the school forum. And guess what? Everyone's smitten with Miss Garcia and Mr. Evans' love story. Cute, huh? We then left to visit Miss Garcia, but Miss Flowers appeared in front of us. What do you all think you're doing? Making a fuss on the school forum? I bravely stepped up to face her. You've seen it. Mr. Evans and Miss Garcia belong together. You should just give up on him already. Is that so? You know what? Mr. Evans actually wanted me to meet him for a private talk tonight. And as for your homeroom teacher, guess what? That position will be mine full time. <laughs> I'm afraid you've got it all mixed up, Miss Flowers. It's Mr. Evans, followed by... Miss Garcia! We ask you to come to talk about Miss Garcia's food poisoning. That's right. Earlier today you visited me, asking me if I was ready to come back to class tomorrow. You were very kind and even brought me homemade food. Little did I know that this was a deliberate attempt for you to make me sick. Luckily, Mr. Evans dropped by just in time to get me to the ER. And now you're talking about taking my place? No way! But, but the students clearly love me more anyway. They hate you because you always make them study. Just then, everyone started booing her. Miss Garcia is strict, but at least she's serious with teaching and always makes sure we study. You don't teach us anything. That's right! And we all know about Miss Garcia and Mr. Evans already. You're just being a third wheel. No! No, no! This can't be true! David, tell these kids that our love is as bright as the sun and, and that we're soulmates! I know you love me! Tell them! David, tell them you love me! Tell them! Unfortunately, my heart has always belonged to Miss Garcia. I was nervous about sharing my feelings with her, but fate brought us together, and now I couldn't be happier. Miss Flower's whole expression wilted. Ha! She burst into hysterical tears and ran off. Mom, are you okay? I'm sorry I wasn't there. I'm fine, Callum. Please don't worry. Um, thanks for looking out for my mom. Please, can you take her home for me? Mr. Evans nodded, then took Miss Garcia away. When there were only four of us... Actually, two of us left. Callum turned to me. You were right. It was so silly of me trying to stop people from falling in love. Because when you fall for someone, you can't help it. What do you mean? I mean, I think I've fallen for you.